All right. Uh, hopefully this is now working. Testing, testing, testing. You guys can see my whole Steam library now. Okay. Let me see here. I can do this, and if I were to switch to this screen, I need to switch it in this way. Okay. Okay, and I need to fix this thing. Sorry folks, just going through some technical issues right now. If you can see the stream, please type in the chat, let me know. Actually, I can't even see the chat right now, so I wouldn't be able to know. Oh, hey, we got some people here already. Oh, yeah. Hi, Chili. Yeah, oh, man. yes, hype. Let's, Let's go. Okay. Just gonna fix this right here. Now I should be able to see the chat. Okay, cool. And I do believe I have some new friend requests. Gonna go ahead and accept everybody. Oh, everyone has like their names up here and everything. The clan names. Oh my god, this is so legit. Let's go. Okay. Um, Alright, I am Hyperino Chili Empire if it was bad. Alright. Uh, cool. Welcome everybody to the first ever Chili's Grand Gorge Off AoE4 Tournament. This is the first ever Gorge only 4v4 tournament, I think, in Age of Empires 4 history. Uh, I, I don't think this map is actually old enough to have had a tournament prior to this one. Uh, we are finally doing it. Gorge is the best map in the game. Go ahead and type that in the chat if you believe so. If you don't, it's okay. You can, you can still type it. Devil sucks. Gonna get knocked out at round one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alright, uh, let's see here. We're gonna go ahead and start by just clearing up a few rules here. Uh, this is a gorge only tournament. Uh, it is a map where all the teams are arranged uh, in a vertical stack like this and they're very close to one another and so it creates for a lot of really compelling team on team gameplay. Uh, and we have four teams here participating today. The Cord, Devils, Phantom Menace, and Name TBD, the, the, uh, the team made of solo players who have never played before uh, together. Uh, they decided to stick with the name name TBD, which I think is very fitting. Um, all four of these teams are of the highest caliber in competitive team gameplay. Uh, we got Diamond and Conqueror players. Some of these players are Conqueror 3. Some of these players are Conqueror 3 plus. So it's going to be pretty exciting. I'm really curious to see what kinds of strategies will be employed. We actually have a prize pool now. Uh, about, I think, $205 have been contributed to the prize pool. So, you know, people are going to be able to go home uh, with, what, like 50 something dollars each? That's USD. So, you know, you can, get, you can afford not just dinner for yourself, but maybe also for your significant other. Uh, it's going to be pretty cool. And uh, actually a lot more than I was expecting uh, when I first announced this tournament. So, huge shout out to everyone who uh, donated to the uh, donated to the fund already. Um, if you are interested in donating to the fund, I need to include a link in my description. I don't have that right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and include that link. And into the description, how do I edit this? Oh crap. All right, one second guys. I'm gonna go ahead and add this link to the description here. Oh, by the way, I wanna okay. introduce my okay. co-caster, Roger Reno. What up? All right. Uh, Should I give you more than that? What was that? Should I give you more than that? Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me a little bit more than that. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. I think. Um, it's gonna be cool to see so, four high elo teams play gorge. Cause, uh, yeah, it's. I think it's one of those bi, you know, polarizing uh, maps on the forums, but. I think that's purely because of people who play solo versus people who play together. I think like if you play together uh, with a four stack, this is one of the best maps, or if not the best map in the game. So I hope we get to see some really interesting strats. That is right. And I also want to say, Roger, you are actually a veteran when it comes to casting uh, game tournaments, I believe. 
Um, previously, I do believe that myself. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Previously, we are in the Do It Big uh, Discord community, which is a little fun community of uh, our friends. And uh, previously, we had a huge uh, League of Legends tournament, a couple of huge League of Legends tournaments uh, held here. Uh, this is the first time we're doing something for Age of Empires 4, so um, it's a little bit exciting. And hopefully, if this goes well, we will think about doing more. Uh, at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the different um team calls uh say hello and we will try to get the game rolling uh i'm gonna go ahead and join the devil's call real quick and roger i'll be right back howdy 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 all right uh the stream has started uh we're gonna get things arranged now so um i think you guys already have the custom lobby set up is that correct that's correct yeah okay yes. thank you so much for doing that um i'm gonna go ahead and ask the team rep here for devils to go ahead and join me and rogerino in the minguchi channel um and also uh we are going to do the um what's it called the the picks uh we're gonna pick all of our our, our sieves there so i think um the best way we'll do that is hopefully you guys can maybe message the captain uh your the the picks that you want and then uh we'll go ahead and have the captains represent uh, the team for that. Are we not going to use the draft link? Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, okay, we'll we'll use the draft link. Uh, House horse, do you mind walking me through that once we once we uh, try it out? Yeah, sure. All right. Um, if you want, we could do a test draft against each other right now. If you want to see how it works. Uh, let, let's let's do that when we get to the Minguchi uh, channel. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and okay. uh, wake up um, the other team as well. Before you go up, uh, yep. you need to either expand the user limit or you're going to have to drag me because it's limited too. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, let me go tell Roger to do that uh roger do you mind expanding the um user limit here so that we i'm gonna we're gonna, we're gonna be pulling up the two captains yep all right all right the cord you guys are uh the other team participating right now uh how are you guys doing we're doing well good all right awesome uh can i get your team rep your captain to uh go ahead and join me and rogerino in the minguchi channel um we are going to do uh a speech as well as uh do some drafting all right see you there shortly oh like come now okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome. Hello, we have hello. Brutal Glory and Housed Horse uh, representing teams uh, The Cord and Devils. Uh, before we do our opening speech, let's try the drafting thing real quick. Let's make sure that that thing works. So Housed Horse, uh, take it away. Sure, I'll uh, make a link here. Mm -hmm. So I'm pasting the link in the AOE4 channel. So chords, um, you guys basically click on that and then click guest, and then Chili can click on that and click spectate if he wants to put the draft up on the stream. Spectate. Okay. Perfect. Alrighty. Cool. Okay. So, so yeah, I quick am... overview of the draft mechanics. So what are the rules? Yeah. So. The rules for today are uh, you can pick any sieves, uh, you can pick duplicate sieves, uh, and there's no bans. So it's going to be very loose, uh, but we do want to make sure that um, people aren't trying to actively counterpick each other. So uh, gotcha. both teams ideally will show their sieve picks at the same time. Yeah, the, the site will do that for us. Got it. Perfect. It's uh, blind pick until we reach the end. So just as a quick demonstration, can we see what it would look like once, um, uh, how, how you guys do it, I guess? Uh, sure. Let's just, do you want a demonstration? Cause we can just click ready and click like four random sieves just to show. Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's just, okay, let's sure. just do a quick demonstration so that both right, teams yeah. know. I'm just going to pick the first four in a row. So just like this one by one, you just pick a sieve. I'm going to pick our actual sieves just so you guys have a sense. Amazing. <laughs> there you go. But okay. then it shows at the end like that. So. <laughs> Four stack of Byzantines. <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, well, the, you're, 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 you're uh, teasing me there. Link now, so just a second. Say again? Sorry? I have to make Orthodoxy to the world. Now. You know what I mean? With the Byzantines. You should go quad, obis, uh, quad Ottoman just so we can have a rematch. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Cool. So uh, here, here's what we'll do then. Um, uh, it's good to know that this works. Uh, this is not necessarily the finalized picks, um, but let's go ahead and do um, 
do team speeches. We'll start with, and, and then after we finish team speeches, we'll uh, finalize our Civ picks. So, uh, the Cord, uh, you are the first on my list, so I think Brutal Glory, uh, take it away. Yeah, we're, we just have a thirst for milk, and so we're really here to mainly to attack Jiggly um, as our number one nemesis. It's sort of a one-sided rivalry. He always beats us on the ladder, uh, but I think we're trying to turn the tables here, and we've got the strategy to do it. We've got our pails ready. We're going to fill them up. 2% and some whole milk, whatever they're offering, we're going to bring it. We're going to fill it. Oh my god, and, okay. Uh, ready to go. Milk guys. Uh, I, I did not know that there was history between these teams, so that's interesting. The Cord and Double seem like ladder rivals. Uh, that's going to be an interesting uh, rivalry to express in, in this tournament. Uh, how's Horse? Do you have a response? Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to say that Devils are actually ready for some fresh Cord milk from farm to table. <laughs> Jiggly's got his milk and gloves on, and we're ready to go. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I heard I heard now they're serving cereal for dinner. Um, so you know, uh, all kinds of applications for milk here. Uh, all right, perfectly. let's do the sieve drafts real quick. So just uh, I guess if you guys don't mind resetting this or just doing this one more time and just show I the real. I posted stuff. a new link. Yeah, that all right. should work. Um, we should probably just move down and talk to our teams now. Yeah. Uh, yep. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Good all right. luck. Whip them out. See ya. Good luck, guys. See ya. A lot to unpack there, huh? Uh, yeah. I, I I don't know what the milk thing is. What what is up with that? Is that like a thing in this well, community? I'm guessing there's a. I think it's an inside joke, maybe. You know, there's a community within a community here that we are probably gonna get a taste of. That's true. Rel relative to the Age of Empires Four community, I think you and I, Roger, are actually relatively uh, newcomers here. Uh, I wonder if there's been some. You know, I actually don't know the history of like past team tournaments so i wonder if like there's been some stuff already i know that doubles is a pretty established clan already and um mm -hmm. the other team the cord is not a I, I don't know that they're a clan but they certainly have a clan tag so they probably mm -hmm. have quite a bit of history i there are a few other age of empires 4 discords out there so i wonder if uh these guys all come from the same discord or something like that yeah, I imagine, you know, with, there's a relatively small player base oh. to begin with, so if you're in the higher ranks that you play against each other pretty often. And we do have the four sieves uh, for both teams revealed, the total of eight sieves, um, and they. I'm a little bit disappointed I'm not seeing four stacks of Byzantines, because I am allowing uh, duplicate sieves <laughs> to be played here, um, or even a four stack of Jean. Instead we have uh, Devils will play, be playing the English, Byzantines, Jean Dark, and Mongols, and Brutal, uh, or not Brutal, but the Cord will be playing... Yeah, let me go ahead and tell them that they can start. Uh, all right, so they will be beginning the game. We will have a two minute delay. Um, so that way anyone watching the stream won't be able to stream snipe too easily. Um, and anyways, on the, the core team, we have the Abbasid Dynasty, English, Malians, and Holy Roman Empire. Uh, Roger, what are your thoughts on these picks? There's a lot of diversity, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, I, th yeah, I think I it's think... no surprise that English is definitely the one sieve that you see on both teams. Uh, yep. English is a very strong defensive and offensive sieve in the early game. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense that on a map like Gorge, where there's so much tight pressure, that English is a natural pick. You get that white tower up, it's going to severely slow down enemy aggression. Yeah, I think it's really interesting coming from uh, the Brutal Horse core team. Uh, three sieves there that generally like to play a little bit slower. Uh, obviously, Molly and HRE have big power spikes in the Castle Age, so we're going to see how much pressure I think that uh, Devils can apply in the Feudal Age, because they have three pretty strong civs in Feudal, uh, just right off the bat with John, Mongols, and English. That's true, and the Byzantines also have their Limitane, uh, which are mm -hmm. actually quite quite deceptively powerful in the Feudal Age. Uh, I do think that the Abbasid Dynasty is the most interesting pick here, actually, because it it's it's not a very popular sieve on the ladder right now. I think it's the least popular. Yeah, that's right. Actually, yeah. straight up. And it's it's very slow. So it definitely the the core team has a much slower composition compared to uh, uh, Devils here. Yeah, and I wonder how much experience you know these teams have specifically on Gorge. In our experience, is just playing together. Uh, we've been able to see some interesting techs. For example, the Abbasid Dynasty building uh, their House of Wisdom in the very front just acting as a giant pathing deterrent so you know that's just one of many texts i'm sure people have discovered or have developed 
playing together. So it'll be really, really cool, uh, hopefully, to see some interesting text that we can potentially take away. Yeah, it does seem like our own games. the teams have gotten started here, and I'm, I'm, there's a chance that, you know, this is the first game that we're actually doing today, so I, there's a chance that I haven't figured this out yet. Um, I'm, I'm guessing I just right-click on this, and oh, click on Observe Match, there we go, all right. All right, and Roger, I think you should be able to do the same thing now. Yep, I am loading in. All right, cool. So while I'm looking at this screen, we can go ahead and announce the players here. Uh, so that's Zardus, Devils Zardus on the English, Devils Mambos on the Byzantines, Devils Jigglypuff, who apparently has a, a has built a name, some kind of a reputation for themselves on Jean d'Arc, uh, Devils Housed Horse on the Mongols, and actually I'm going to go ahead and set it up so that I don't have that ugly white bar at the very top, and on the Cord side, oh, it's just, it's not the Cord, it's just Cord. Oh, interesting. Uh, we have Yikes on Holy Roman Empire, uh, Brutal Glory, uh, the guy that was representing Cord earlier on the English, Ender on Abbasid Dynasty, and Raka on Malians. Unfortunately, I don't, I'm not too familiar with any of these players, so I can't comment too much, but um, I don't know why. I feel like I've seen the name Jigglypuff before. Is Jigglypuff like, is he in Drongo's videos or something like that? Is that why people know him? Well, recency bias, I just know him as the guy involved with milk so you know i think it's an opportunity for <laughs> these players to also just make a reputation for themselves in front of an audience instead of just amongst their opponents on the ladder you That'd know what cool. i just you know what i was just thinking um the fact that there's like some kind of milk theme with jigglypuff and they're playing jean d'arc it just reminds me of um what's that ridiculous thing that jesse said again <laughs> the, the birthing chamber oh what no we're not gonna get into that on the stream <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Wait, wait. Okay. Just, just, to, just to appear a little bit less weird. Uh, we have a, we have a friend who was making a reference to some Magic: The Gathering card. And anyways, yeah. anyways. <laughs> um, uh, is your observer delay on five seconds and counting? Yes, I am okay, about so to enter insane. the game shortly. Perfect. Here. I'm excited. Hopefully things don't crash, and hopefully people can see it on the stream. Brutal nights. All right. Uh, so unfortunately, we will be using the standard observer um, here. I won't. I don't have some special caster uh, view, but we'll just do the do the best with what we have here. Uh, not much to see on the top left graph, so I'm going to go ahead and hide that. We have in the front ink. Oh, that's right. The the devils team gets a lucky spawn with the English in the far forward. Um, very very lucky positioning for them there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other team here. And the, oh, that's really unfortunate. The cord did spawn with their Malian player in the very front. Now obviously the Malian player typically what's the Malian strategy? They're going to want a cow boom. And when you set up your cows, it, it really exposes them to uh, potentially getting raided. Or if the first player's base, which is in the front line here gets destroyed, uh, they're going to lose access to all their cows. So what this usually means is the Malayan player has to build their cows further back in the uh, in their allies' bases uh, instead of um, just trying to build it all up in the front here. Because if they lose it, they stand to lose a absolute ton. Uh, yeah, it's not all bad, though, I think. You know, they, uh, the English player is only second from the back. Mm, or, they do have uh, a backside, forward. a bossed. Yeah, and they do have a bossed in the back, so pretty good. That is very good. Let's see here. Oh, Ultimately, I think outside of them high rolling right. English in the front, they have three sieves that all prefer to be a little bit further back. So, um, the fact right. that English is in, is in the front too is uh, as, about as good as you can expect. Why, why am I. What is going on? I cannot. Oh, there we go. Okay. Weird. My setting was all weird. Um, it looks like on the other side, we have the Jean d'Arc in the far back. Uh, not a. Not a not necessarily a sieve that cares about doing oh wait this actually looks like a very large version of a huge version of this map as opposed to a regular large size version of this map that might have been Is one setting that they did incorrectly uh relatively minor issue i think we can still go ahead and keep on playing this uh the teams will be spaced out a little bit more than expected as you can see the, the there's quite a bit of space between uh, the town center and the gold mine and the town center and the next player's gold mine so uh that is one potential issue that's going to just throw the throw a little bit of a wrench into this game uh the uh after the jean d'arc player is the mongol player who's also uh relatively far back not necessarily a sieve that cares about being uh this far in the back you'd much rather have your byzantine player uh in the far back here um anything else that you see on the map right now roger 
Nope, and I don't think there's going to be any Dark Age shenanigans here, so we already see the, you know, Council Halls coming up for, uh, well, actually, just, just look at Council Hall. Quite a bit of sheep for the Malian player here in the front. Uh, mm -hmm. Due to the size of the map, I'm guessing there's actually more sheep that are spawning. Uh, the English player is opening up with, um, or sorry, Brutal Glory, uh, the English cord uh, the Cords English player is opening up with the with the farm uh, farming placement this early on. I'm a little bit surprised. Yeah, he's still not close to aging up, which is um, it's an interesting development because we can already see the front English player for doubles uh, halfway up done with his age up. Yeah, is there is there any reason to to doing that? That's I'm not sure why he would want to do such a such a severe farm transition this early on. I think he also took a uh, Dark Age Wheelbarrow. Uh, I'm of the impression that, you know, we've got to let these guys cook. These guys obviously have played a lot. Uh, maybe, you know. Maybe they know something we that we some don't. Crazy yeah. OP strats. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit excited to see that. Uh, we do see the uh, Cord Yikes. He has his uh, Prelate position on his wood line. Looks like he's really focusing on gathering that wood right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably trying to set up some defensive perimeter for his Achenchopel. Uh, placed right next to the, both the berries, the sheep, and the gold. So this is going to be a very fat it's gonna be very, He's going to be very happy about that. We do see a partial wall coming up for the uh, Brutal Glory English player here. Um, stopped by the uh, Zardas' scout. Perfectly positioned. Well timed here, actually, as well. Yep. Um, and we also see that... Uh, in the far back, Jigglypuff rushed up his uh, School of Cavalry. So John is still level 1, which is not necessarily the default for Jean d'Arc. But I think oh, clearly here, trying to prioritize some raiding. Uh, the first knight is about to come out. Yeah, unfortunately so we'll that knight is going to go. have to travel a very long distance to uh, mm -hmm. make an impact. So definitely a disadvantage uh, for for the Devils team as a, as a result here. Uh, we do see our first longbow coming out uh, from the orange player. Uh, yep. Zardus is already harassing the Malian villagers. Uh, it's trying to stop their age up here. Getting the Saharan trade network up uh, is going to be a little bit of a feat. Uh, they do get it up, so that way the back line is a little bit better defended. I don't think any villagers went down as a result of that. We still see uh, only one killed right now. I'm not sure if that is a villager loss or not. Looks like he has 20 villagers and... Zardus has about 21. Yeah, it might be a villager kill. Um, it could be our first blood in the whole tournament. Uh, we do see uh, Brutal Glory now positioning a council hall uh, forward right next to the Malian base. Um, hopefully setting up a defensive perimeter there as well. Again, I'm not sure why he uh, transitioned to farm so quickly to... Oh, he's actually feeding the Malian player sheep? Is that what he's doing? Is that why his, his sheep are here? I think so, yeah. There's the red sheep uh, right on Teal's base here. I mean, again... And I think it makes sense, you know, Molly is probably not going to be able to just start building cow pens right away. So making sure that they have a consistent supply of food before yeah. they can get that off is going to be strong. I also like seeing that the Malian player, uh, Teal here, has, uh, or Raka here, has actually uh, sent his woodline villagers all the way to the back, choosing not to gather that uh, forward wood, despite having built a lumber camp already uh, in this position. Obviously, this is this position is very raidable by the enemy English player's longbows. Zardas actually has longbows positioned right on the other side, has full vision of everything, and you just, you can't even see it as, uh, as the Malian player. There are a pair of Keshiks out, um, kind of patrolling this top side right now. Yep. Gonna meet a wall, so... Yeah. Very good partial um, walling here. Ward, Cord should be well aware of the early calf presence coming out from Devils here. Yep. Uh, there are also French Knights on the bottom side. Almost took out a scout. Yeah. Oh, and looks like our first cow is going down. <laughs> the Keshiks are, unfortunately, were positioned right next to that mill. They saw, they spotted the cow. These villagers are going to be eating some steak tonight. Uh, we do see some cattle ranches coming up in this area, so there's probably going to be a lot more. He's asking for a lot more aggression here. Uh, Raka is, that is. Uh, these Also, these cattle ranches are positioned in a way that I'm not... It's not clear to me where the Fulani uh, corral will be I going. I think there's going to have to be some walls deleted. I uh, see. If they want to get the full value. Yeah. And we see even more uh, even more Keshiks coming out here, trying to harass that mill. 
Uh, 50 wood sure early. Sure, the bounty as well. Yeah, exactly. Lo losing a mill early in the game is not too, uh, Sorry, losing losing a mill in Age of Empires 4 is not the worst thing ever, but when you lose it this early on, it every every little thing counts. And especially if he gets that uh, Mongol pillage bonus from it, uh, it's going to be a huge trade-off. But it doesn't seem like he's committing to it. Uh, Red has shown mm -hmm. his longbows. Says you're going to have to, if you want to take this thing out, you're going to have to lose a Keshek or two. Uh, it looks like... The Mongol player is retreating back for now. Oh, we have uh, we have professional scouts from HRE. If you look at the bottom side, there are HRE scouts collecting deer and bringing them back home. Oh. Wow. Okay. Wow. We also have a uh, we also have here. a good hit here. I think from yep. uh, a little Jubilee. bit of a raid. It does yeah, look like our one. I think. Yeah, our bossed player in the back here, yellow, uh, played by Ender, did go for the uh, e econ wing. Uh, so he, we should see a, quite a few town center set up. Currently, only going on two TC here, um, and blue did lose a scout just now. Oh, oh, but he has many more. He's trying to drop the deer. He doesn't want it to be seen. Oh my uh, god, he's running away. And we do see some more. Are no match for French knights, unfortunately. Yeah, and we do see some more early Pretty aggression retreat. from the Keshiks on the front line. Um, that being said, I also want to call out that the HRE player Blue here, uh, Yikes, is actually positioned a Burgrave Palace in his base. So not going for relics, trying to go for that Castle Age Men at Arms spam, making up for mm. some of the lost tempo on his team. As we mentioned earlier, the uh, the core team is definitely going to be the slower tempo team, uh, which is why we see so much early aggression from uh, from Devils right now. The only team, in fact, that I think isn't on the map is... Is it the Byzantine player? Actually, or did the Byzantine player have Keshrix? I don't believe so. It looks like the I... Byzantine player went for a second TC. He's the only player on this on, on the double side that went for uh, eco play. Yeah, I like it. Um, you know, Byzantine, if they can get off the ground, then their economy is forced to be reckoned with. So getting a lot of uh, time to boom out. And we do see Keshex in the back finding a angle on the nope. Looks like there, it's going to be very hard to actually raid this position. Unfortunately, the large size of this, uh, or sorry, the huge size of this map is uh, potentially slowing this game down a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, we got Keshex raising the far back wall here for Abbasid. Going to be reacted to with another wall, so. Uh, good job so far, not taking huge damage from these raids. Um, that being said, I think one thing I would point out as an Abbasid player, usually if you go Econ Wing, you usually want to go at least two more TCs if you can. And given this spawn, he definitely could have gone away with it. Um, so the, be the boom could have been more boomed than it is right now. But uh, as it stands, not a whole lot of action. As yeah, I say that though, green gonna come in again. Gonna run over yet another poor Abbasid village gold miner. Yeah, I'm surprised to see that there is no partial wall on on this uh, right hand side of the map, knowing that this is where the raids are coming from. Uh, in fact, yellow has positioned the Abbasid player has actually positioned himself with uh, all of his archers in the front line here. Uh, we actually have two players uh, macroed into archers uh, in the forward position. The bl uh, blue player, uh, yikes, has actually sent his uh, HRE men at arms to burn down this forward tower by Zardus. Uh, and it looks like this, uh... I think there's gonna be a bit of a timing here, coming out from Cord. Yes, it looks like Cord is making a move, all of, all their units are starting to position forward. There are some Mongol raids in the back, obviously Blue's not happy about losing a few villagers here, but it's not gonna be too impactful, just one villager loss at a time. Mm. And it looks like all three armies are actually moving up. The only army that we don't see currently is the Malian army, which is actually comprised of Musafati warriors, starting to slowly mass up. Jean Dark now taking center stage in the front line here. Uh, there is a defensive army ready to match them. Uh, Golden Horde Tower coming up for the Byzantine player, uh, along with a lot of Byzantine longbows to match the English ones. And, oh, and actually Orange has already hit his uh, timing with Castle Age, with the King's Palace in the far back here. Opting to play for yeah. a little bit of a slower match. Hmm, okay, so this is kind of interesting. We see uh, Kord just kind of running under TC with a few units here. No rams, uh, they're currently being built, so yeah, these HRE brand arms I don't think Scout are down. that tanky yet. Uh, as it stands, there are fights underneath uh, this orange TC. They do have the level 1 range defense, but I, this just looks like a lot of potential EXP going to Jean. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Jigglypuff being very careful not to lose his Jean too early, playing very conservatively, playing oh. back in line with it. Okay, it doesn't get the surround on John here. And does get a massive Q. Out. 
and a huge yeah. heal for all of his allied players. Yeah. The Keshiks are trying to hold the front line, trying to fight off these archers, but there's so many archers at this point that those Keshiks are- There are no rams though. Practically getting one shot. The uh, uh, the English outpost with the Spring Golden placement doing a lot of work here. The first ram coming out for the Abbasid player. As, as I always say, the Abbasid player is always the ram bitch uh, because they do, get the they do get that technology for free. Um, as a civilization oh, passive, man. and the okay, ramp well, is going John down. John just leveled up, so we we'll see her on her, on her horse, just uh, like that. That's so fast. Just hiding in and out, uh, taking. Well, I don't think she's gonna get oh, out of this she, one. Though. I think no she's heal. gonna get. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That, that, that's a John, dead John right there. But it's also a level three John at 13 minutes in the game, so I don't think Jiggly will be too upset about that. As it stands, just not enough rams, I don't think, to really sustain a push. Um, and yeah, these men at arms are also gonna. These Varangian guards, excuse me. Both um, teams have two players in the castle age at this point. Uh, if we take a look mm -hmm. at the military chart here, we'll see that uh, the English player Zardus has the most killed. And actually, by far, all of the Devils players have more kills compared to the court side. So I would say the current advantage is on uh, is for the Devils. Um, the fact that the Byzantine player has been able to boom for this long, uh, four cisterns already, two town centers. If we take a look at their econ counts, he's already on... He's already on 65 vills in comparison to Zardas, who's at 53. And if we take a look at the enemy side, uh, or not the enemy side, but rather the other side, Kord, uh, the Abbasid player in the back who has been able to boom this thus far, is at 62. So uh, I would say Devils is looking to have some kind of econ lead here. That being said, we have finally hit Castle Age with the Malians here. Um, with the Grand Fulani Corral fully online, we can see non-stop Musafati warriors getting pumped out. These guys are melee, or these gals are melee crossbows. Uh, gonna be able to deal with both the knights that we're seeing and potential men or arms that we're seeing. Another raid coming in uh, against blue here from green. So still just kind of reminding them that they're on a ah, bit of a timer true. here in the front. Yep, okay, so but I mean, all in gonna come in, so... The town center is being pressured. It's going down. Three yeah. rams are taking it down. Wow. That's 15 villagers completely exposed. Going to go down here. A huge disadvantage to the orange player and to the devil's team. This might this be an upset. Really Honestly, going into this game, I, uh, d the devil's team is, is a very organized team. I was expecting them to be the uh, the, the favorites, actually. Uh, we mm. s Basically, orange's bases could put... It looks like he knew that early on, though, and established a lot of his farms all the way in the far back. Uh, not really under any raid pressure. That's one advantage that the devil's team has over the Cord, is that Cord decided to opt into four infantry compositions. Uh, basically okay, having... Mango, mango out, mango out, mango out from um, uh, the Byzantine player here. This and is going to be the tide. Okay, it's not being the, used to shoot the archers. Oh, the second shot was so much better, though. Oh a my lot of, uh, god. A lot of Abbasid villagers now on half health, or Abbasid archers, excuse me. Um, yeah. Yikes, Look. trying to do his best to get on top Massive of the Massive shot. Here. Looks like he's going to be able to do it. Should be able to clear these mangoes out. So two mangoes down here. Um, That's two mangoes. And this going to continue. Keep right. is coming up. This keep so is too many far forward. Here. This so might be a critical mistake here. here. The oh, need to move no. up. The Lombos need to move up. The Lombos have the range to really uh, harass and... jean Druk is trying to heal. Oh, this is, this is hectic. Uh, okay, John, John, looks going, like, John going down, it looks like... Right, Jean is going kill, down here. It looks like up. the keep will go up, but the Rams are already on it. This keep is half health. Is that a... There's another Manganel in the back here. It looks like they're under a significant pressure. The Byzantine base is trying to hold on. This is insane. Yep. Abbasid and archers moving also over to in the, the wood line. Yeah, Byzantine villagers are going down here. This is so much pressure. This keep is, in my opinion, this keep was placed too far forward. You need to accept the loss of that area and just build it in the slightly back area of Byzantine base. That's another Manganel going down. Uh, these Varangian guards, very sad to, to to not be able to defend it. Uh, the wood line for the Byzantine player completely lost, as well as the Grand Winery positioned is also under Front threat here. Front line is slowly faltering, though, I will say. Uh, still a lot of archers out, but not a whole lot of uh, HRE men at arms. So we'll see if they're able to actually end up killing this keep. Uh, looks like Zardis doing his best to try to repair it. One, One thing big I... thing, the, the keep that was being built was getting rammed while under construction, so it didn't complete with that much HP. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that this uh, this keep is still standing strong. I, I, I thought it would go down a lot sooner. It's been able to do quite a bit of damage. Uh, none of the, none down, of the forces though. here are armored. Uh, only only the HRE men-at-arms, and those guys are already mm -hmm. petered out at this point. Um, at this point, the keep has gone down, but one thing I do want to call out is that we have at least two players on the Devil's side that have begun trading. 
uh, which will give them a huge power spike uh, shortly uh, in the late game at least. Um, so even though they're losing all these villagers, it might not be an econ economic loss for them, at least not a total economic loss. That being said, there are a lot of negative trades being taken out but here by the uh, the French player uh, Jigglypuff or the Jean d'Arc player Jigglypuff. Uh, fighting four knights against a massive squad of archers, even though you counter those archers, it doesn't actually uh, turn out good for you because there's so many archers here. Uh, I've always harped on, on 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 my channel before about Lancaster's Law. When you fight with a smaller army against a large army, your smaller army is not going to be able to produce the value that you'd expect that you spent for them. Uh, you're, they're actually going to end up losing harder uh, as a result of the uh, uh, not being able to deal the damage before they die. Uh, and that, that's exactly what we're seeing here. The Mongol horsemen are just going down. Uh, anyone, anyone that comes up to match this army is just basically immediately going down, not able to actually contest against the, the mass here of the, ar of the archers. That being said, uh, Brutal Glory, the English red player, is still stuck in the Feudal Age uh, throughout all this time. And if we look at the scoreboard on the right-hand side, no player has fallen below 2k just yet, so it's not too bad yet. Uh, the orange player, in English player, is already in the Castle Age. We do see uh, uh, upgraded veteran Longbowman uh, here, but they will have to contend with HRE's men-at-arms. Yeah, we're seeing the White Tower come up though, so oh. Brutal Glory is going to age up literally next to the Council Hall of his opposing number. Yep. Um, so those are going to be upgraded veteran longbowmen not too long after. It does yeah, look this like... is just really great timing uh, play coming out, I think, from Ford. Yeah, yeah. Able to do so much damage. They're able to hit the Malian Castle Age along with the HRE Castle Age all at the same time. Uh, we do see all, a lot of technologies coming in here at this point. Uh, that being said, Musafadis are not being upgraded. There's no uh, blacksmith upgrades for them. What, are, what is the Malian player spending his resources on? Wow, actually all of these uh, players... If I take a look at the resource uh, current resource float here... All of these players are doing right, a John pretty John's gonna come in with another charge. Uh, I don't think this is enough though. They're just gonna get swallowed up by... This is basically just Ajin Court, no? <laughs> yeah, something like that with the Abbasid uh, archers in the front line. Uh, well known presence. <laughs> well known presence at Agincourt is the Abbasid archers. Uh, yeah. Able to hit a massive Q. Um, not sure what this is actually called. Holy Wrath. Able to smite a lot of Abbasid archers. The Abbasid uh, mass at this point is down to just four or five archers, so it looks like uh, the Abbasid yeah, player is going to have to step it up. There are a lot of red longbows. I, I do want to call out that a moment ago we were pressuring the Byzantine Town Center and now all of a sudden uh, the court team has been pushed all the way back. Even though they secured mm -hmm. this white tower, th that's all that they seem to secure actually. They're not able to make it deeper into the enemy base. Yeah, uh, the tempo has been stalled somewhat. Uh, so we'll see exactly how these teams decide to move forward from here. Uh, there is a decent night mass moving out here from Jigglypuff. See, if they're able to get some raids in the back, but doesn't seem like it. Seems to be well tracked here by Cord, running some English men at arms. I, I do want to call out and this very interesting wall structure placed by uh, the yellow player Ender on the left hand side, able to wall in the enemy team away from the side resources. Yeah, that is hilarious. It's very interesting. Uh, these mm -hmm. forward uh, Jean d'Arc knights are able to catch some of the reinforcement streams, uh, which is actually. Pretty good strategy, uh, able to slow down uh, the buildup. I think a lot of uh, drive-bys though from the men-at-arms that want to get up to the front line. Yeah. And I think the heal just got used again. That's a two-minute cooldown, so if John ends up getting into a big fight here, we'll go down. Yeah, going to be now pursued here by some German military. We do see and a skirmish. In the front, we do have a treb. We have a treb uh, out, so okay. that front shall be renewed very soon. Okay, so at this point, Devil's House Force has finally made it into the Castle Age. That is the last player on the Devil's side that, to make it into mm -hmm. the Castle Age. In comparison, Ender, uh, the Abbasid player, is still stuck in the in the Feudal Age. Uh, not really well positioned to age up anytime soon. He did finally go for actually two more TCs, so sitting on four TCs now. Uh, but mm -hmm. his economy is just very slow given that he's uh, lacking the next age. Uh, we do see that he did try to go into Orange's uh, backward base with the archers. Not able to get any kind of uh, advantage here though because uh, the Archer Mongol player is a little a little crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit limited here. Uh, the Mongol player able will be able to... Yeah, yeah so we'll be able to get some down. horsemen down there. Uh, if okay, I take a look hold at... on. We have a push onto the Mongol TC here. Yep. Oh, the Byzantine TC already went down. The Mongol TC will have to be packed up and retreated. The Curl Tide does come up here. Uh, so crucial to get that Castle Age Curl Tide. Uh, a Byzantine keep being placed right next to it. A lot of cavalry coming up. 
this might completely sweep that longbow mass. It looks like the uh, the the cord front line is just getting evaporated by Orange's crossbow and longbow composition in the back here. Uh, yeah, lack of spears is actually going to start to hurt them now. Um, this Treb is going to try to. Get yeah, out. I don't think it's going to be possible. Oh, Brutal maybe. Glory is desperately trying to kite his longbows back, trying to retreat this trebuchet, but there's so many horsemen and knights coming on the field at this point. I mean, the Musafadis are doing a lot of work uh, against the knights, but um, you, I think you would still prefer some spears for the uh, spear brace. You can stun some of these cavalry coming in. But yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, I gotta start to turn here. Quick shout out here: uh, a well-positioned keep by Jigglypuff secures a stone on the le a stone outcropping on the left-hand side, uh, actually able to kill quite a few red villagers on the way. Uh, so I love that the players are also sneaking in uh, little little moves on the left on the left uh, on the on the sides of the map. Uh, oh, as well as a John's Rider denying the gold mines for the Malian player. Um, all of a sudden, it looks like the advantage is going to the Devils team with a curl type position right next to the White Tower. Uh, they don't have any siege weapons up yet, but they have such a big army at this point. I think one thing that uh, is also working in Devils' favor here is that they have been trading, uh, not necessarily, f you know, full scale, but that is going to add up over time. They've been trading for a while. Uh, there's no trade, obviously, for Cord, so yes. um, the Econ advantage actually potentially in favor of uh, Devils here. And, and, a, and a devastating John Dark raid in the back for uh, for Ender here. Losing a lot of villagers, the camels that he has there will not be able to defend it well enough. Um, and another thing I want to call out is that, uh, that Ender did set up forward walls all on the left-hand side. They will finally be taken down by, uh, by our player house horse here the mongo player um he was also trying to do some shenanigans with a wall on the left hand side able to build a sprinkled okay. wall here but the uh we have a berkshire right next to that white tower so this is gonna be okay. yeah all your english base belong to us now says brutal glory so that's gonna be a huge launching pad for them for any future invasions i think this is really gonna come down to if there's gonna be a strong cavalry presence here from the mongol and the french player or john dark player I, thus far not really able to find any crazy raids i think i think the thing i'm most surprised by is the fact that um all four of these uh cord players are sticking to the f full infantry composition a absolutely no cavalry uh, coming out for this side they're not trying to raid the sides at all uh, in fact resorting to sending a few a handful of men at arms to the back or even archers for to raid um or, or villagers for, for for that matter. Actually, we have the forward outpost positioned here, able to start uh, sniping out some of the traders uh, in the back line. Yeah, it's really nice. And yeah, um, looks to be another push coming in very, very soon. The thing that I haven't seen coming out from uh, Cord here, which could really bite them, is the lack of springolds. Uh, obviously, mass infantry is not going to like seeing any mangonels. So if you know, doubles here are able to do some mangoes, get some good shots off, then uh, this push could get extinguished very, very quickly. Yeah, they're very bold to just charge up this Malian uh, horde. Wow. This Without... is already half dead. Yeah, that, that's here we so go. much here damage. We go. No but siege, no no mangoes on either side, really. I yeah, don't think what is going I see a sprinkled uh, and a couple of trebuchets trying to get rid of this white tower, which is going to go down very, very soon. The, the Mongolian horsemen do have an angle on the uh, in, on the English longbowmen, but the English longbowmen are able to kite the them out. Repairs. The repairs! Oh! It's so close. I think there, they're going to be able to barely hold. Maybe. There is a bombard emplacement. Oh, oh no, insufficient wood. Brutal glory all, here. All the, insufficient all, all, all wood. Uh, oh no! Well, the white tower is going to go down, but the Burgrave is still there. Um, uh, the Berkshire, and, you mean. Or, yeah, excuse me. Berkshire. Yep. So, I think... It, it looks to me like the curl tie. Yeah, the, the, as far as I can tell, doubles. all of Africa has just <laughs> been eviscerated. Like, I'm not seeing any Malian units anymore. I think his population oh, space man. just completely opened up. He's down to and 7 3 population. That's crazy. The Malian player just got evaporated. I don't even know what killed those units. That's crazy. Yeah. Is it the. No, no real tanky units. And uh, now guard? these uh, French knights going to probably. That's the White Tower going good. down. Oh my god, an absolutely shocking swing in favor of the devil's team i i don't know what it, was it the curl tide is the curl tide that powerful the, the mangano finally coming out for the byzantine player but i don't think we saw a mangano the entire time for that engagement that being yeah, said what i would say is like 
uh, you know, or they have the numbers advantage, but from a uh, population efficiency advantage, they are far, far weaker um, than these castle age units coming out from. Uh, this might devils. be Mingano getting sniped here. Uh, we do see Ender tr trying once again. This is this seems to be his trademark tactic. He's he's sending a few archer raiders once again, a boss at archer raiders, moving into the back line, trying to spot the English player's uh, economy line. Actually, we do see a lancer already raiding here, um, and a wine guard palace for the. Uh, for the Zardis, Ender getting uh, hit pretty hard, by the here. way, by Jean here in the uh, far north. In the far north? Losing out on some, yep, the gold miners, and then they're going to be, uh, yeah, you just see some towers oh, yeah. going down here. There's well, already a raised tower, that's two. Yeah, I think I think if you're comparing the the effectiveness of knights versus archers raiding, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Jean Dark knights for sure. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, he is on 4 TC, so even if he loses some villagers, I don't think he cares that much at this point in the game. Uh, he did not, unfortunately, take the boot camp upgrade before taking that engage, so boot camp does increase the health of all infantry by 15%. That includes his archers, so... Oh, he does lose one of his TCs, just straight up raised by this... Uh... Well, this is a level 4 Jean, by the way, so these TCs are going to go down very, very quickly. That explains why he has so many elite riders. I think he's taking the one he took the power that gives him six elite riders or something like that, right? I think it's. I actually I've never taken that power myself, so I have no idea. Uh, Shout out to your horsemen here, list. You thought these guys didn't look very good. Wait, what? You know they got their swords. No, yeah, these are these are these are the uh, sword wielding horse. Uh, the Jean the Jean riders. Yeah. Yeah, they look ugly as they look ugly. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I'm just, I want to give a shout out to your content. That's what I'm saying. I see. I see. <laughs> yeah. just, um, we don't see it very often, so here we go. All right. Anyways, uh, charge uh, in the front here. It looks like the Berkshire has gone down now. The uh, core team has no defensive line in the Malian base. Uh, just trying to fight back against the English men at arms here. Uh, keep in mind the Orn uh, Zardus is in the Imperial Age. These men at arms are not fully upgraded, but he does have uh, some wine guard units supplementing his uh, his composition. In the Krotai kind of come down here. Oh man, okay, this so Krotai is doing so the... much work. Yeah. It looks like this entire time Zardus has been trying to uh, harass the enemy trade line, but the Mongol player seems to be cleaning that up at the same time. Uh, the Malian mass is finally re uh, coming back onto the front. Now, keep in mind, the Malians they have a uh, they have. Wait. Am I pronouncing Malians correctly? The Malians. The Malians. The Malians, they do have a Castle Age power spec, but at this point we're reaching the end game uh, status where there's the, the Malians are gonna be significantly weaker. If they go even if they go into the Imperial Age, the Malian Imperial Age is not going to be that impactful. Uh, we do see a Mangano coming out. Mangano's not gonna be doing too much against uh, French knights here. Um, and I hear a bombard. Is that that is a HRE Culverin, uh, expecting some enemy siege, but the, I don't see any enemy siege. The uh, the Keshiks are charging forward, not able to break through the line of the Imperial Age uh, HRE infantry ball. Um, a, just a ton of archers oh, on both man. sides shooting in the back. The big thing here, though, there are six tribuches just swinging from Devils here, so uh, they're going to be able to destroy a lot of this forward production uh, in due time. There are two Culverins out, yeah, like you said. But I don't think they're going to be able to, able to walk up to these trebs. They're yet. not able to reach it, yeah. One well, thing that I'm uh, kind of surprised by, there's no crossbow mix coming in here for either archer uh, Civ, um, which I think would really help out. There are obviously longbows, but there are also Keshiks, there are some men at arms. Um, but it looks like they're not really going to mix it up. Just going to stick with this archer ball. Wow, this this game might this might actually go into the uh, go into the sudden death mode. No, I didn't expect it. I thought this game would. That. I thought this game might finish earlier, but I mean, definitely yeah. Cord is getting pushed back. Uh, did they start trade at this point? Oh, hold on. Uh, John coming in again. Uh, Ender under threat here. There are a lot of. Uh, you know, there's going to be an ever increasing number of John's riders if uh, this doesn't get addressed anytime soon, and it does not look like it is going to get addressed anytime soon. So Ender yeah. is under a lot of pressure here. When we're looking at the score oh, differential, actually. it definitely looks like Devils has the advantage at this point. I think that trade, uh, the fact that it wasn't stopped early enough, uh, just able to buy them so much of an economic advantage here mm -hmm. which i'm pretty impressed by because uh we did have uh we did have zardus completely lose his base to a devastating timing attack it just seems like that timing attack didn't push in deep enough or something it, it got it got effectively stalled early on and now now it, the rest of this game has just been court slowly losing territory yeah and they're missing two huge landmarks obviously the white tower and the berkshire can both control a ton of territory but both are just smoldering ruins in this base here basically there's this 
No Man's Land. Yeah, I do want to call out that uh, this, the lowest score here is currently is on Raka, the Malian player. Uh, Mal Malian player. Uh, I think he is. Uh, he has been on 1TC this whole time. He does have his cow boom going, but uh, beyond that, there's just not enough econ right. getting pumped out I think here. this this Keshek arm uh, this Keshek army is going to be able to push through with this. Uh, I think it's no crossbow through. mass. Yeah. yeah. And here we go. This might be it. And a curl time moving up, as well. <coughs> Orkite's currently not deployed technically. The the mangonels, oh, blues mangonels are not doing anything. They need to start oh, doing something. They're trying to get to the front. Why are they oh, trying to get to the front? front? They're trying to shoot the archers, but only able to hit two of the wine guard oh, rangers. Oh my gosh! Absolute waste of the mangonels here. Everyone's trying to retreat. They're not going to be able to body block for those mangonels. And oh man, you hate to see it. The loss is there. All right. Well, let's see if uh, let's see if Cord can adapt here. Um, that is our surrender. Now facing. Oh, okay. Well, as I say that. Damn. That's gonna be GG. That is a that was a good game. Um, that was a good game. Yeah, a, a, a little bit of an upset here because the the core team was looking so strong in the early game. Again, able to completely take out uh, one of the one of the doubles players' bases, uh, at least their forward base, and then able to get a second town center uh, from the Byzantine player as well. But then, just after that, the doubles team did a really good defense somehow. Like, I'm not sure what it was. I think it was the curl tie that just like. Buffed up the gu their guys so effectively. Um, yeah, I mean the curl tie in team games, especially in a map where you're gonna have four players all fighting together, is such an insane force multiplier. Um, yes, you know you're gonna get the attack speed, you're gonna get a little bit of healing for everything. Oh man, including that's... siege, which is kind of insane. Yeah, uh, a a bit unfortunate, but if you take a look at the economy counts, it definitely looks like a uh, housed horse. I think that was the. Was that the Mongo player? Yeah, the Mongo player was just able to get so much of a trade advantage, I think, uh, in the back mm -hmm. there. His economy count's going up, up, and up the whole time. Even though the even though Ender built nonstop villagers, it's just not able to compete with the uh, the effectiveness of the Mongol trade. Um, all right, so we are going to... Uh, that is the end of the first game here, uh, and we do have a winner coming into the, uh, the, the, the finalist stage, and that will be De Team Devils. Uh, I'm going to do a quick... Um, uh, post game, uh, what's the word? What what what, what do we call interview? it? Interview. Yeah, post, post game, game interview. interview. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull uh, the same players one more time to do a post game interview. Okay. Uh, Sorry guys, we're, uh, for just extracting you right there. Uh, that was an excellent game. We just we had a really fun time watching it. Um, it very very competitive match from both sides uh, i do want to do a quick post game interview with both of you guys since you guys did represent your respective teams in the beginning um i want to go ahead and start by asking the uh the winning team devils uh house horse your team was struggling in the beginning suffered a brutal timing attack that uh took out almost two of your players but somehow you guys managed to pull it back in how are you feeling about that game yeah, I mean, like, from the Observer perspective, it might have looked pretty scary, but actually we were kind of talking the entire time about how we thought we were going to win, and it was fine, because the thing is, the people oh in the back God. can boom so hard yeah. when you're doing an all-in like that, mm -hmm. that if you don't manage to kill the enemy team completely, it's just going to be completely fine, which is exactly what happened there. My trade went crazy, yes. and uh, we were just able to close it out from there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do want to call out here that I'm seeing now that Zardus has 616 kills. An, ex yeah. an absolutely crazy KDA there. Uh, very well played. Um, Brutal Glory, uh, y as mentioned before, your team was doing very effective in the early game, uh, but then unfortunately things did shift to a loss in the end. Uh, how are you feeling about th how are you feeling about that game? Yeah, you know, I'm just sad that Jiggly wasn't in the front. We really just wanted to milk him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it was a fun game. They played well, and I thought we had a chance. I thought we maybe mismicred a little on their keep that went up in the Byzantine base that bought them a lot of time. Mm -hmm. The keep well. was huge. And, and yeah. the trade was certainly, we probably should have attacked the trade, and we sort of let the trade go a little wild, and the Kulu Turai was pretty filthy. Krotai's yeah, nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to point out that the Wingard Rangers, when they're fully upgraded, have 22 attack under the Krotai. Oh Ooh. my god. That's that's insane. I don't even want to hear Those that. are what you can do in team games, but you can't do them only one. You can have some crazy combos. Pretty filthy. Mm -hmm. That's well cool. Well by them. I, th I think Jiggly was certainly the, the uh, best player on their team with his raids in the back. Getting a, you know, spawning a bomb bombard out of a, an explorer type unit is a little bit broken. <laughs> I actually didn't even see the bombard. Damn. Fully, uh, 
uh, and eliminated uh, because having you know hero units is not in the spirit of Age of Empires 4 or the Age of Empires series. Um, so I think there's more to that. But no, they played it well. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Well, well played. Well played. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, you guys can go ahead and uh, go back to your teams, and I'll start talking to the next teams. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for the tournament. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, wow, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was like both both players very respectful. Uh, I think a lot of good analysis. I think both player both teams kind of know what they did and uh, what they should have done better. Um, I am going to go ahead and start warming up the next game here. Uh, there's a couple things I want to make clear uh, to the teams is that we, when we're hosting it, we make sh we need to make sure we set it to the large size and not the huge size because the huge size definitely slows down the game just a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the other teams and say hello. Uh, so, name TBD. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. How are you guys doing? Hi there. No, we are ready. You guys are ready? No, absolutely. Okay, perfect. Uh, we are going to be doing the same thing that we did with the previous team. So uh, we're going to have both uh, both teams bring up a representative to uh, give a little speech and then also do uh, reveal your Civ picks for the first game. Um, uh, one thing I'll call... Have you guys already arranged the custom match? Do you guys already have everyone invited? Uh, not yet, not yet. Let's, let's do it now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Please, uh, please go ahead and start hosting the custom match. One thing I want to call out is please uh, set the observer delay to two minutes, and then also yeah, yeah. Uh, make sure that when you're setting the map size, uh, do the smaller maps. I think it's called large, not huge. Yeah. 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 Fine. 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 Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. Sure. And I'll go say hi to the other team as well. Uh, and then whenever, whenever you guys are ready uh, to have your representative come up, uh, uh, just have them join. Yeah. Roger first, in the first day. First day, we're gonna join you. Yeah. Yeah. First day, we'll do it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Phantom Menace. Ah, hello. How are you guys doing? Great, how are you? Great. Excellent, excellent. All right, so uh, we will be getting started with the second game uh, shortly. Um, I don't know if you guys heard uh, what happened in the first game, but we will have the captain of this team, or at least the team representative that you guys want to pull up, uh, will come up into the Minguchi chat with me and Roger, and you guys will uh, will have the captain give a speech uh, as well as reveal your uh, your team's civ picks for this first match. Um, do you guys have a rep? What's that? Uh, do you guys have a rep that's uh, yeah, yeah. ready? Our Shadow is our representative. He's ready for everything. Okay, yeah. awesome, awesome. And <laughs> I and I do believe <laughs> Arakan is already setting up the custom lobby. So um, uh, hopefully nice. you guys can all kind of join the same uh, lobby and figure that out while this is all happening. All right. Uh, yeah. Whenever you're ready, uh, God Shadow, uh, go ahead and join me in Mingu be Join me in the Minguchi channel. Johnny Ledesma says, "Happy Saturday, y'all! Awesome first game to start the tournament." Says Walnut. I L S says, "Erichtig der Dirch die Reinhen, Weismosis Dirch Masmir." I don't know. I don't. I don't know any German. I'm assuming. I'm assuming that that's German. Just tuning. <laughs> In. Thanks for doing this, Chili. Thanks for watching, man. Uh, all right. Uh, do we have both players here? Yes, we do. All right. Cool. Um, so we have God's Shadow representing Team Phantom Menace and Stay Frosty three two four representing Name TBD. Uh, let's go ahead and do our opening speeches. God's Shadow, you have the platform. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks for having us as well. Yeah. Well, so we love playing Gorge. Um, we have come up with a team strategy in the last couple of days before the tournament. Let's tournament. Go. And, well, we're excited to play. Awesome, awesome. Excited to see it. Uh, all right, and Stay Frosty of Name TBD. Your team is uh, comprised of solo players, so you guys probably haven't had too much experience playing with each other. Uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, no, I mean, it was a um, pretty interesting experience, you know, four, four solos, some that are well-known, yeah, placed together. There's no prior team sh teamwork, so that was something we had to get work on. But you know, we're ready, we're ready to tackle the challenge of being four souls on a team. But you know what? We're a dream of a we're a team of a dream. So team with a dream. Well put. Well put. Awesome. Uh, all right. So we are gonna go ahead and get into the Civ Pick, uh, Civ Pick mini game. Is it even a mini game? It's more like you guys just reveal your Civ picks. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to do this actually. Roger, do you happen to have the link by any chance? 
Uh, I, can, I only have the link from the thing that they posted. That's right, that's right. Uh, can I do this again? How do I do this again? Oh my god, I'm kind of struggling. Uh, I might need to pull in House Horse to help. Oh no, he's busy. Okay, uh, let me see here. Sorry guys, I just need to redo this thing. How the heck do I do this? I mean, we could honestly just have both captains type their picks. Okay, yeah. Actually, you know what? <laughs> Let's just do and that. And then just, just press enter on the count of three. Uh, or you can just you can just DM it to me. Uh, yeah. So I, that way I can verify that you guys aren't, uh, aren't like, switching up the sieve picks. Um, yeah, uh, so both of you guys just uh, go ahead and type me the sieves that you guys are picking. And then make so sure that in the custom lobby you guys <clears throat> reveal that exact right. same... Uh, the exact same lineup and do you guys yeah and the map size map size just double check the map size all right send you it yeah understood so i sent you a dm perfect perfect thank you so much uh all right and do you guys have the lobby set up already we are yeah you guys are in um my team is in except everyone except corbin is i don't know if your team's in my team is not in i think so I haven't received an invite. Oh, I, I think if I join, I can't actually be an observer, so I have to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, gods? Uh, yeah. Let's get your team in here, and yeah. Yeah, could you send me an invite? Then uh, I can get everybody else. Yeah. Um, Eric, Eric can ask if the settings are good. Large, large map. Uh, we're going two minute delay, and we should be chilling. While you guys are setting this up, I just want to do a quick rehash of some of the rules uh, for this tournament uh, that I want to call out. <clears throat> One is uh, make sure you do not use stone walls until at least the castle age, as well as uh, no stone towers or stone wall towers. Uh, basically the same rules that you see um, uh, in the rest of the competitive uh, matches, uh, in the rest of the uh, tournament matches in, in the AOA4 community. Um, and then uh, at the one hour mark, we will trigger a sudden death where the first team to have an advantage in sacred sites uh, will win the game. So it, it means if you have even just one more sacred site compared to your opponent, uh, you will win the game. And the goal for this is that we don't want games that drag on for too long uh, beyond the one hour uh, mark. Uh, and then the last rule I want to call out, I'm currently blanking out on it. Was there another rule, Roger, that I, I don't remember here? I think, anyways, I think that's... Uh, I, think that, I think that covers uh, it. Yeah. One question. Yeah. Uh, when you say no stone walls until the castle age, does, it, does the person making the stone wall have to be in castle, or does everyone have to be in castle? That's a good question. Uh, I would say just the person making it has to be in castle. Okay, thank you for clarification. Other than that, it's just wood walls. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, uh, uh, and for me. do you guys have everything set up at this point? Yeah, we're just waiting on God's Shadow and one more. Uh, could you send me an invite? Because I, I can't find the, the match. What's your tag? I don't have you added. God's underscore Shadow. Oh dang, you're a really simple man, aren't you? <laughs> Keeping it clean on Discord and on... Yeah. Yeah. Alright, All right, send you an invite. I do want to ask uh, God's Shadow, what is the inspiration be behind the name Phantom Menace? Well, that was, like, basically on the fly. We like Star Wars, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so I can't, I, I, I cannot join the game. I cannot join the lobby somehow. There's an error. It might be bugged. You might need to just remake a new, new lobby. I sent a message in the chat. <laughs> I told them to remake the lobby, and let's see. Try, try again real quick. Yep. All right. Seems to be working. Yeah. Oh no no no. no. <laughs> Sick. All right. Um, doubles left by accident. 
Um, hold up. Let me just tell him to join back. Uh, everyone in the stream, are you still able to see the stream? Let me know if the uh, the stream quality changes at all. At all. Name TBD is such a sick team name. <laughs> to be decided. To be decided. When shall it be decided? If Malian did sopas and raided, chaotic and fun to watch. Wineguard Rangers plus curl tie. GG, a lot of GGs in the chat. What a good community. Everyone's so, uh. Such a good. Such, so polite. What rank is Chili? Odd to hear. Is the curl tie. Is the curl. Is the curl tie that powerful? I am but a mere shitty diamond to low conk player, so. Humble man. Uh, we're restarting the lobby now. Eric and can't join. Everything's just going wrong at the wrong moment. <laughs> okay. Bit of chaos. Sorry folks, we do have a little bit of uh, technical difficulties it seems like, so we'll just shortly figure this out. TY for saying Malians correctly. Yeah, that's something that I just, it doesn't come naturally to me. I don't know why, I just keep on saying Malians. It just feels so more natural to say it that way. Hard to know which is really winning. Thought the top team had the upper hand. Yeah, it looked like they did until they didn't. Uh, which is one of the reasons oh, why I think this map is so interesting, yeah. When is Rogerino coming? Oh, hi, Rogerino, my caster. Uh, it looks like, you, Roger, you have a fan, Matthew Zhang. Yes, sir. Did we just play against these? Abba play in the back is kind of nice, though. Yep. So, Chili, you probably don't play a lot of Mongol because Curl Tai is so sick. Yeah, no, I, I stay I stay far away from uh, Mongol. I'm, I I cannot deal with the fact that you have to unpack their their buildings and stuff like that. Oh my god, it always bugs out for me. I start going crazy. Uh, I have been trying to learn the Tower Rush recently, though. It's a little bit. It's kind of fun, um, but it's. I don't know. I'd rather play other civs. I think. I'm really curious, actually, if we had bans, um, how much of a priority people would place on banning Mongol. As Coral Tie, I think, is pro just off the top of my head, probably the best single landmark for team games if you, uh, especially on Gorge. Yeah, it uh, is a very powerful landmark. That's a good point. Coral Tie, really good in teams. Yeah, I totally agree. Alright, Shadow Center. Let's see Settings in. I'm going to take this moment to start to chew on some of my leftovers on the side here. Alright, we're just missing two people. Orvinus and whatever it is. Let's go. All right, we're complete. Everything. Everyone's ready. No, we're missing Corvinus. And then ready to go. Settings are still being tweaked. Okay. Just make sure that the cheats are not on. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you have the delay off. They have it on five. Five? Yeah, I'm telling them right now this one should. Back to. Uh, cheats are off. Everything's in order. Uh, right. Awesome. Okay. If everything's in order, uh, go ahead and rejoin your teams and feel free to start the game. And we'll just. Uh, Wait for the observer delay. Thanks. Good luck, guys. Good luck. All right. Uh, so 
let's uh let's get into the sieves. What uh what have they picked? Oh, mm. sorry, I'm just I'm just chewing on on my food a little bit. Or you can DM me and I'll, I'll I'll talk through it. Oh, that'd be nice actually. <laughs> uh, let me let me DM you these sieves. <clears throat> Uh, this is for, uh, name TBD. Okay. And this is for the, uh, the Phantom Menace. Okay. So, we'll start, uh, with name TBD. They have decided to go with Mali, Japan, English, and Rus. This is actually really interesting. Uh, these are gonna be, it's gonna be almost mirror matchup because for the phantom menace we have molly english Rus, and the other agents of uh in the expansion which is jushi's legacy so three sieves are going to be shared between both teams um and the difference is going to be japan for name dvd and sushi's legacy for phantom menace So not as much diversity, I think. Uh, we had, I think, six unique sieves in the past uh, game. Only five here. But, or seven unique sieves, excuse me. It looks like you can start waiting for the observer delay now. <clears throat> okay. Oh shit, you guys can you hear, can the, hear shoe? the shoe. Well, I mean, it's very clear that you have food in your mouth. I don't think it's like you can actually... I can't hear any chewing, per se. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about the the chewing. Um, yeah, Roger, you can't hear the chew because uh, I'm, I have the Discord thing that's uh, uh, cutting out the background noise, but I don't have that on my main mic. I see, I see, I see. So they're hearing all the chewy goodness. Um, just munching on some salad over here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, so All to right. call out the players here, we do have, um, for team, uh, name TBD, we have Risky on the Japanese. Now, Risky is a friend of the channel and has, uh, oftentimes shown his Japanese prowess, going for that fast castle, getting those mounted samurai out, uh, as well as those Onamusha. So I'm excited to see what he'll do here. Uh, up next, we have Stay Frosty, who's on English. We have Arakan, who's actually part of the Devils Clan, which just played, but I think Arakan is uh, on his own this time. Uh, and he's playing the Roos, which is going to be interesting. Uh, not a sieve that we saw in the last game. And then lastly is Corvinus 1 playing the Malians. Now, I remember Corvinus... So, Corvinus 1, as many of you guys might know, is a pro player. Uh, and he's uh, one of the top players, as far as I, I can tell, in the game. I think at least... <clears throat> At least in the top ten, if not in the top five. His uh, yeah, this would be interesting. I remember See. back when he was named Salami. He actually was uh, famous for developing the um, the Salami strategy, where you'd rush Castle Age as the Malians, as the Malians, and um, and pump out that Farumba garrison. Uh, on the other side, we do have the uh, what is this? The Phantom Menace team uh, with in the very front we have Zer Zer Der Hart. Zero Dare Heart, uh, playing the Jushi's Legacy. Not having the Jushi player in the front, not the best thing, but uh, we'll see. It also does help him get his Jugnu out faster uh, and have him make an impact faster. Up next is, I got named TBD in my wallet. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. I don't know which player this is, but that's a great name. I got named TBD in my wallet. <laughs> Love it. Um, playing the English uh, and then uh, uh, obviously a sieve that is very good on this map. Uh, both teams have an English player, which as we established earlier, English is just such a good sieve on the Gorge map uh, due to those uh, defensive defensive advantages that they get. Um, up next is That's God's... Felix, by the way. Just judging by the Discord usernames, the only mm. one that's missing is Felix. So we can call him Felix instead of like, that long ass name. Oh man, I I'm not going to remember Felix. Um, up next, we have the Roost player already going for a hunting cabin on his deer. Uh, pretty well positioned here, actually, getting all those hunts in, also getting some sheep in at the same time. Uh, letting his Malian player get all the gold mines, the Malian player carefully leaving just a little bit of a gap here for the Roost 
uh, mining camp. Uh, Roost being played by God's Shadow, who just gave his little speech. Um, it, the Malian player is a little bit sad that this wood line is kind of fucking over his. Uh, or can I say that? Yeah, that is a crazy. Uh, that is a crazy wood line spawn. Yeah, it just completely screws over his uh, his house placement. I mean, it's not going to be terrible at the end of the day, but it's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, you, don't, you don't see this happening for any of the gold line here. Uh, and then, yes, uh, we do have a back Malian player. Very happy about the back Malian player, uh, played by FTW Cookie. Um, having a back Molly means that you can set up all your cows and have no no problems transitioning into your Castle Age cow boom. Uh, I will say that God's Shadow is uh, kind of... Uh, what's the word? Autopiloting his uh, his his roost scout uh, hunts, basically pushing out all of the deer for the Malian player. Not something that you'd you'd like to see at this level of of of, of a match. Uh, ideally, he would position it so that the deer are kind of tightly packed, or at least pushed towards the Malian base, but relatively minor issue. So I won't hark on that too much. Uh, looking at the other side, we do see a backline Malian player, Corvinus one, uh, in the. In the third yeah, these position. These spawns are pretty mirrored, actually. Uh, both Mollies towards the back, uh, both of the Asian civs in the front. Oh, there's actually two moves yeah. in this game. Yep. Interesting. So, uh, three, so three, three of these civs are shared. Mm. Um, the only difference is uh, that uh, TBD has Japan and uh, Phantom Menace has Japan. <coughs> or Tsushi, sorry. I will say that uh, Corvinus will have uh, a open pit mine where he can place all kinds of houses, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate for the other Malian player. And Corvinus is also aging up with five vills, trying to get that monster quarry up ASAP. Um, Stay Frosty up here in the front, uh, English player relatively in the front, we're pretty happy about that. As well as Japanese player up in the front, this uh, Kuro storehouse is a little bit unfortunately positioned, placed in front of the wood line. Meaning that those farmers are going to be pretty exposed. One thing he could do, actually... Uh, it's, it, hold on, real quick. Uh, it seems like the stream is lagging quite a bit. Um, are, do you have something going oh. in the background oh, that's no. uh, affecting this? Okay, I'm going to try to fix my lag here. Let me see what I can do. YouTube is not responding. Error, YouTube is not responding. How do I fix this? Uh, is it is it better now? No. MG donated ten dollars through super chat. Yeah, laggy. <laughs> Next slide, please. Oh no, I need to. Sure fix it's like my PM. Yeah, uh, just just uh, yeah, take your what? time. Uh, maybe it might be even worth a restart. Um, because I'm not really exactly sure what's happening. Uh, chat. It's still not better. Okay, cool. I am gonna go ahead and restart the stream then. Uh, wait, Charles, on the count of three, pause the stream so we can not skip through the game. Oh, no, 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 <clears throat> sorry, uh, uh, the, the replay? They're saying it's, they're saying it's okay now. Okay, so oh, okay. It, it looks okay. like oh, we yeah, are okay. able to okay. continue here. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I was trying to record the stream at the same time. It looks like my computer can't handle that, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. We'll just have to deal with, um, just having the stream available here. Uh, Alright, so it looks like um, we do have a Ford uh, Japanese player. Uh, a little bit unfortunate. Uh, and all already the... Uh <clears throat> I think his name was Felix, uh, already positioning a English tower right next to this Kuro storehouse. As I mentioned before, this Kuro storehouse is a little bit unfortunately positioned. Um, going to be uh, in the front here, exposed. Uh, Would have preferred to have seen it like maybe in the back left corner or something like that, somewhere a little bit more defensible. Uh, unfortunately, I think Rissi is going to be losing out on a lot of value from that Kuro storehouse. That being said, the... Uh, the uh, tower is going to get cancelled though. Tower is going to get cancelled. Stay Frosty having a larger English longbow mass here. Uh, trying to uh, trying to push off the uh, Felix Longbows from contesting. Mm -hmm. Good defense here coming out from Frosty. And quick shout out, by the way, this is an insane meditation card. It's still nerfed, but yeah, that's a whopping gold 50, 50 stone per minute coming out here for the Jushi player, um, along with some food and some gold. So, gonna be pretty happy about that. And actually, we see him going already up to wow. H three. So this is gonna be the uh, this is gonna be the monk gameplay. We're gonna he, hear a lot of he did a naked fast castle as the four as, as the front player. I'm kind of shocked the audacity of this man. That's that's a uh, that's bold. That's bold. I like he, it. I like it. Yeah. Um, the English player able to kind of cover for him a little bit, then neutralize uh, what would otherwise be some early harass coming in from. Stay frosty. So, 
We do see some early a lot of relics going warrior scouts coming out from Corvinus with two stables up already while he's in the feudal age. Not really focusing on the cow boom, instead focusing on getting some harassment out. Uh, with, we'll see how that pay, pays off. Uh, a roost knight, a single roost knight is going to try to contest these four uh, Malian scouts. Uh, not able to do much when you have this many guys up against you. <clears throat> I'm a little bit surprised right. that I don't see more like um, people broaching the uh, the line of scrimmage. Oh, the Malian scouts are actually professional scouts. Um, they are. Oh, we yep. see the and Malian scout hit. micro. Yeah. Oh, oh. Unfortunately, the deer carcass is too heavy, and they're gonna not be able to get away from these uh, purple knights coming in from God's Shadow. That's two scouts down. Oh, drops the carcass off and runs away. Okay. Looks like he's losing so out. Only lose out one scout. Yeah, God's Shadow does lose out, lose out on a scout on the other side here. Uh, we hit, we see Risky losing out on a scout as well. A lot of scout deaths right now. It seems like the early game is gonna be all about uh, all about the scout battles. Mm. Yep. But um, again, Zerda Heart first to castle here. Uh, gonna be able to vacuum up at least a few relics before anybody else can. Uh, oh, unfortunately, he has two Shaolin monks uh, rallied to the same relic. Looks like this is gonna be a mistake that's gonna slow down his relic gameplay. I will say that the, in the previous game, we didn't see that much of an emphasis on relics. I I, I saw mm -hmm. that some players were gathering relics, but it wasn't a priority by any player. Mm. <clears throat> So a little bit yeah. surprised to uh, see uh, Molly and Roos here are going to be tag teaming down here with their heavy cab. So got some sofas and some Rus Roots knights. Gonna try to get into uh, Corvinus's base here. Hmm, that's true. The uh, the cookie seems to have opted for some early warrior scouts and sofas, trying to raid Corvinus. Uh, not in instead not opting to go for the heavy cow boom. At this point, I think Corvinus's cow boom is a little bit more developed. Uh, also having a uh, due to the uh, base being really tight, he has to expose his Grand Falani Corral positioning a little bit more than he might have liked. Um, that being a said, lot of deer, though. Yeah, getting a lot of deer. Deer that otherwise would have been in a pretty risky position. Both player, both teams, outside uh, of these raids, playing pretty conservatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, as far as frontline goes, it's literally just longbow be longbow here. Um, looks like Stay Frosty's mess, just that little much bigger. That little bit bigger. I do want to so. say that the uh, both both Roost players have managed to acquire over 500 bounty, which is pretty typical in a Roost team game uh, situation. That being said, uh, I think God's Shadow has a slight 100 bounty advantage. Not going to be the end of the world. Mm. Oh no! The sofa charge able to get so much damage on on Corvinus here. I think that's two villagers down. We'll take a look at the military count here. Uh, it looks like Corvinus actually lost four total units. Uh, two of those being scouts, I think. So, uh, setting him just a little bit behind. Not something that he's too happy with. I wonder what the team comms are like. In the meantime, the uh, Ford Zer Derhart able to secure more and more relics uh, from across the map, even sending them into the back line of the enemy enemy team. Uh, risky. At least two coming in right now. Oh, one of them though gonna get picked off here by the knights from Arakan. Our first Wululu in the game, in the whole tournament actually. Uh, it's interesting that mm -hmm. the uh, that the that the Chinese Shaolin monks have a different kind of Wululu audio effect. We see some really movement sure. in the front here. Uh, potentially going to see some action coming in now from the combined samurai longbow mass here. Yeah, so R Risky That's did opt to go for a fast castle, uh, but instead put his Yoroshiro in his barracks, meaning that uh, we're going to get a lot more... Uh, ba basically, he's going to be the samurai front line for the, uh, for the longbow back line. Uh, a little bit different than what I see him play usually. He likes to go for the mountain samurai. Hold on, samurai. huge raid coming in onto uh, the Jushi wood line here. A Wooloo to distract, I believe, in this case. No, nope, not gonna get anything here, but... Uh, okay, so some some Chinese villagers are gonna go down here in this wood line, but otherwise it does seem to be... okay. And they're trying oh, really hard here. Yeah, that's, that's at least so five relics, relics in uh, the Jushi player's hands here. Oh my god. Six, I think. I count six. That's Actually. a lot of red knights down. I, I will say, uh, one thing I want to call out here is that it's very nice, the fact that both teams have arranged their colors to be cold versus warm colors. Uh, this has been an issue uh, for a lot of spectating matches, um, where if, you, if you're trying to watch the game, you just can't even tell who's winning or who's winning a fight or what's going on. Um, Luckily, uh, I, I appreciate that in this case, I, I'm able to understand what's happening much better. Like, I'm able to understand the fact that Corvinus is getting raided by a few more sofas. Another Wooloo. This guy's just... It's just for a distraction. Oh, but this is, this is my hit. This is my hit. The villager's going to get hit. 
and he misses it just barely. The villagers get out. The Wulu is not effective. Actually, this Shaolin monk, though, might cause quite a bit of damage to these villagers. They need to finish building that wooden fortress if they want to survive this situation. And he does get the Shaolin, Shaolin monk out of there. He'd rather keep the Shaolin monk alive than risk him uh, getting attacked by some... Wow, there's so many relics taken by the blue player at this point. Mm -hmm. This could be a we're huge up to, advantage. We're up to, I think, eight for the Jushi player at this oh point, my which God. is kind of insane. That's crazy that the bald man build is still this effective. I, I mean, and that being said, this whole time his Meditation Gardens has been focused on gathering stone um, more than any other resource, so I'm a little bit surprised that he got this much of an advantage this early on. All civs, all civs have unique Wooloo? Wait, what? There ain't no way, dog. Wait, for real? What? It all sounds the same to me. Nah, dude, I'm pretty sure everyone has the same Wolulu sound effect. That's crazy. Thanks. I yeah, no, yeah. no, that, that's no, crazy. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really seeing that, but it's okay. Um, let's see. Are there any more? Are there any relics that haven't been picked up? And oh, we, are there any that are uh, picked up in favor of name TBD here? We do see a I second town center for so. God's Shadow placed in the far right hand side. His villagers had to travel quite a bit to get there. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised by this because, sorry, that was the salad. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit surprised by this because usually Roos goes for a second town center very early on uh, because your Kremlin gives you so much defenses. It looks like he's delaying that second town center, but, but finally able to put it up now. If we compare that to Arakan, uh, Arakan also does not have a second town center, instead just opting to go for various hunts across the map. Very interesting strategy here. We're starting to see Chinese lances come right, out onto the field at this a point. Lot, a lot, lot of uh, Roost Knights also going to eliminate Risky's relic carrying priest here. That's so uh, many we're moving Roost on Knights. To some raids. These are early knights though, so that is the one saving grace I think for name TBD. But yeah, yes. uh, looks like Frosty's woodline is going to get. Ooh, okay, just just one actually. Only only one kill there for. Um, yeah, I'm not Shadow. sure if Red is going to win this fight. Araka needs more mass in, in order to combat that. Yeah. That being said, I, the cross. Yeah, go ahead. I do want to call it that Risky is uh, currently the highest uh, score on the, on, the, on the whole team. In the whole game right now. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised by that. Oh my god, a devastating raid onto Arakan's uh, villager line in the back here. Uh, so many sofas here just eating these villagers alive. That's going to be seven, eight villagers down? Uh, let's take a look at the losses here. That's... 21 total losses for Arakan. Arakan, by far the player that's taking the most brunt of the damage. Uh, that being said, on the front line, Risky and Frosty are finally pushing up. Samurai in the front, Longbowman oh, in the they're back. They're going have a grand old time here against these longbows. There are nothing, there's nothing that can kill these heavy units in a decent amount of time. Four rams able to take down a Chinese outpost immediately. We'll, we'll see if there's some monks trying to wooloo to stop these samurai, but right now these samurai are running rampant. A fir the first nest of beasts oh, coming oh. out. Oh. Samurai have to pull back. There's Whoa. one Samurai jam-packed in here. Can't move. Oh. He will be converted. Uh, actually, there's there a couple two, Samurai that got converted. Two, two Samurai, yep. But, uh, yeah, I don't think they really care too much. Look at how many Woodline uh, villagers are going down here. Oh, no. I didn't even see that. A rock and getting a devastating raid onto uh, Zer Der Heart here. Killing... Oh my god, that's so... That, this is like a game-losing loss right here. This raid... Yeah. You lose everything. Uh, not enough frontline units here coming out from... Um, yeah, he, he might have gotten just a little bit greedy with all those relics. He has those relics, but at this point, he's just, he's just saving them up so that uh, the enemy team can grab them. This is them. devastating. Yeah, this, uh, this oh, front TC, no. capital TC for Zerda Heart going to go down here. These relics are probably going to get looted. And this yeah. might be the beginning of the he, end here. What this reminds me we'll of is know. like, you know, people who prepare for the zombie apocalypse and they have their preppers, they have the bunker and they have all that food stored up. But then if you're, you know, if you're, if you're, if you don't have the big guns, then, you know, you're just preparing that food for someone else because they're just going to raid it from you. They're going to take it from you. And you're just going to, you're just going to cry at that point. Oh my God. Yeah, we'll that's see. another siege weapon coming out. I think that was a, another nest of bees coming out and immediately getting popped. Um, just absolutely not enough military presence coming out from... Uh, uh, Phantom Menace here. If I was blue, I'd be screaming right now because my farms are also exposed. If we look at his villager count, he's down to 16 vills. As far as I can tell, the uh, uh, the Jushi players, pl the Jushi Legacy players, out of the game. I'm not sure what he can do in this situation. His villagers are so exposed. Yeah. The the, uh, the backline Malian Cookie uh, Cookie, the Malian player, trying to send some sofas to come up to try to protect these to try to protect against these Roos Knights, but these Knights are just so devastating, completely... Oh no, they're hitting the gold line. Oh, this is devastating. Everything's going wrong all at the same time. 
It looks like that. Uh, it looks like Felix is able to try to get a uh, white tower in his base. If he does get this up, it will at least buy uh, the. It will buy the Phantom Menace team another. I would say three minutes at this point it's not going to be that effective because without a mass you can't stop these uh these rams from yeah, pushing there's up. there's nothing there's nothing to kill these rams right now uh for phantom menace uh yeah and the back two players are too busy dealing with all these knights just trying to run through yeah keep, keep in mind that this entire time we haven't really seen corvinus make an impact on the game yet uh he's just now starting to send his sofas forward um i think he was defending against some raids in the back this whole time so he's actually like uh, they've been down, essentially down a player and able to get this much of an advantage. Uh, we'll see what this means uh, moving forward. If we take a look at the scoreboard, uh, two players are knocked down to 1k, so already a huge disadvantage uh, for the Phantom Menace side. Um, and now yeah. uh, Rams are on to Felix's uh, capital TC now as well. The White Tower is down. Did he lose the resources? Was he able to age up? He no. did not age up. No. Oh my god, that's all the longbows going down at this point. He's not able to defend. Um, but that being said, uh, uh, we do see stay. We do, we do see Frosty fighting uh, the knights and cavalry line. Not the not the fight that you want to take with, with your longbows. But there's so many longbows that you might not care. It looks like the Malians are going to be going down uh, in the back. Corbin is TC raiding down for uh, Felix as well. Corbin is holding the entire enemy team in lock the jushi player able to get two town centers up relatively quickly i'm impressed by that but uh it's so exposed absolutely no units coming out from the jushi player that is already a surrender this was a very fast game and it looks like the game will go to name tbd the dark horse of the tournament we weren't ex this is a team that hasn't really played together hasn't really been uh able to practice their coordination uh but able to just come out with such a strong push uh and completely catch their enemy team off guard. It looks like the early uh, relic play by the Jushi player was not able to pay off quickly enough, and that will be game. <clears throat> Good game. Played with both teams. I uh, saw some, you know, conflicting strategies there. I think, um, but yeah, definitely really good coordinated push coming in from the dark horses here, and uh, able to just kind of plow through. Yeah, I think. Oh my god, I'm losing my voice a little bit, sorry. <clears throat> I need to cough a little bit more. Take your time, brother. Yeah, if we take a look at the e econ count, we see this precipitous drop happening at the 14 minute mark, uh, where Zerger Hart just lose, loses all of his vills. I think it was that wood line where he, he was focusing on the battle in the front, and maybe he just didn't get a notification on the side or something like that, but he loses so many vills to a Rockin's raid, and that basically completely uh, changes the pace of the game. Uh, the other thing I want to call out here is both Malian players able to get the Kalboom up, but Corvinus was able to get it up just a little bit faster, and as a result was able to hit Castle Age faster, uh, whereas Cookie had a slightly more delayed castle age uh timing uh which might have affected his army mass uh coming into uh the central fight here if we took a look at the military count stay frosty just constantly producing those longbows out of his uh council hall since the very beginning of hitting fuel age essentially uh and then uh, able to just have way bigger of a mass compared to any other player in the game uh and let's see what else is worth calling out risky's military jumps up the moment he hits castle age uh just able to hit that timing very effectively all right let's go ahead and pull in the uh the team captains again for their after action reports uh i'll go ahead and pull in what was that god's shadow and a rock was it rockin that came up stay frosty came up here I'm going to go ahead and pull them up. God's Shadow and stay frosty. All right. Hello. Welcome back, guys. Very good game. Uh, a lot of really interesting strategies I saw there. Uh, let's start with uh, let's start with God's Shadow. Uh, so you got, your team had a very interesting strategy where you were trying to secure all the relics on the map. You, you were able to do it effectively, but then unfortunately got caught by a timing attack uh, by the name TBD. Uh, how are you guys feeling about that game? Yeah, well... As you rightfully mentioned, so our strategy was to grab the relics and then go mass siege um, into Nessa Bees, basically. Nessa Bees. And they Perfect. caught us exactly at the moment where our first Nessa Bees arrived. So, um, yeah, it was exactly the right timing. They caught us off guard and we were maybe a minute off there in our timing and then we got overrun. And yeah, that's it, basically. 
Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and stay frosty. Uh, you guys were the dark horse in the, in, 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 in this tournament. Uh, none of you guys have played together before, but you guys were able to eke out, not eke out rather, but rather uh, do a very good on your first game, uh, able to secure the win. Uh, how are you feeling? How, how are you and your team feeling? Um, it feels good. I wouldn't say I'm... Oh, I wouldn't exaggerate it because after all it is a match and, you know, don't want to get ahead of myself. But, you know, it feels well. It feels well that everyone's rules paid off. You know, it felt really automated, standard, and really good that uh, the Dream Team managed to pull it through on the first one. And we're ready for the next one. Excellent. And that was Frosty of Name TBD. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, all right, we will go ahead and move on to the finals rounds. Uh, so you guys can feel free to join uh, back into your teams as we try to organize the uh, the next match. Gotcha. Thanks, everyone. Good game, bro. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hop into the two calls and try to figure this out. How much time are you giving them? Well, what do you mean? Well, you know, you can give them any time or you just jump straight into the next game. Oh yeah, should we t should we take like a brief uh, a brief break just to give people like some time? Yeah, to... maybe like maybe a couple minutes I think to just kind of gather. Okay, uh, especially we'll, we'll do for, a... uh, the winning team just now. Yeah, yeah, let's do a five minute intermission. How about that? Um, that sounds good to me. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and type that. I'll, I'll let the teams know real quick. All right, hey guys, uh, good job on your victory. Uh, we are going to take a five minute intermission so people can. Uh, grab some food or go to the bathroom uh, and then we'll be back at um, well five minutes just uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll notify you guys shortly yeah. all right oh cool yeah, yeah cool what's up guys uh, it looks like we yeah. do have a match for you guys in the finals I don't know if you guys saw the previous match but uh, name TBD is has moved up the ladder uh, so our finals nice. match will be between doubles and name TBD uh, we are going to do a Wait, this is Team Devils, right? Am I talking to the right guys? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Team Devils, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, we <laughs> we're gonna do a quick uh, intermission, so just five minutes. Uh, take some time to use the bathroom, uh, grab some food, um, and uh, yeah, pray to your gods. Uh, and we will resume shortly. Um, all right. And speaking of which, I am going to use the bathroom. All right. And I need to update this screen so that the viewers can see intermission. Okay, five minute intermission, guys. So, uh, it's the time to play your favorite background music from uh, Age of Empires 4, I think. You know, give a little bit of a sound. But actually, what, do you, you what, get. What is my favorite do you get background DMC'd? Uh, I don't know if I do. Uh, I'm sure I can play Age of Empires 4 music, right? Well, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, if you can, you should. You know, it's kind of just, you know, like with all these esports broadcasts, when they go into intermission, they have some, usually some EDM, some low tier EDM in the background, but you can do better than that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Age of Empires 4 soundtrack, better than low tier exactly. EDM. Uh, hopefully, people can hear that. And now I will go use the restroom.
And thank you for the good game. Don't say you, you have ever seen that before. Free fucking scouts, and I get 80 bounty. 80. You shoved my arm at the start of the game. 80 bounty. I was like, I'll do it. Do it this game. 80 bounty. 80. I never had that happening in my game. It was crazy. I was like, I'll do it. Do it this game. Three fucking scouts, and I get 80 bounty. 80. You fucking bitch, you just got lucky. You fucking bitch, you feel sick, bitch. Look at this, it's a, a piece of shit trophy behind my TV, I don't even care, you see? Oh, the sheep! <laughs> oh, I just said that I'm no more. I told you I was sick of that thing. Alright, <clears throat> and I'm back. I'm still chewing though. Hey, we'll be I'm back. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. What are we eating today? It's like a Italian salad mix. Some chicken, some quinoa. Pretty good. I'm low-key choking on it right now, actually. Oh, shit. <coughs> All right. Oh my god, I might die on stream. Oh. Carry on in your honor. Anyways, um, I don't know if you heard, but that was AT Bunty by wait, who who made AT Bunty? Is that Beastie? Did Beastie make AT Bunty? No, 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 no. Some some viewer in a stream, I think. Music by Ty makes noise. Edited by Blackfire. Bunty by go. Marine Lord. Oh wait, that that's Marine Lord's voice. Is that what that is? Yeah, at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. I mean, that, that, yeah, that's that's not <laughs> definitely not the uh, beasties. That sounds like that. Three fucking shots. Where's the beef? Hmm. All right. Anyways, okay, Mr. Chili. Mm. So, uh, hopefully, what are some other things that uh, you're gonna want to see coming out of both of these teams now that they are in a best of three here? Uh, um, howdy, oh. howdy, howdy, how's horse? Um, I'll answer your question real quick, but whew, also I need to. Uh, oh my god, I'm like, I need to uh, swallow this. Swallow this quinoa. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, you're saying, what am I looking forward to seeing in this best of three? Yeah. Uh, what I'm really interested in most is uh, seeing how, if there's any kind of subtle meta, ch meta changes in between games, now that both teams have had a chance to see how the other team plays, uh, will they try to adapt to the different strategies? So, for instance, uh, Devils went for a trade-heavy, boom-heavy uh, uh, strategy early on, which allowed them to defend against and, and ultimately push back against um, um, Team Cord's uh, early push. So, I'm wondering if Name TBD will come up with a strategy to uh, defend against that, and we'll have to we'll have to see. All right, <clears throat> now we have both captains here once again. Uh, we have Housed Horse of Team Doubles and uh, Stay Frosty of Team Name TBD. Um, Thank you for joining me, guys. Uh, all right. Well, so this next uh, this next segment here is going to be a best of three. And I'm still digesting this chicken. Oh, my God. Um, this next section will be a best of three. Uh, and obviously, the the best may the best team win. Um, we'll do one speech in the beginning and we'll do. Uh, but we will do separate. Uh, let's let's see. Let me think how we're gonna do this. We're gonna do a uh, pre-game interview now. There's gonna be a post-game interview afterwards, which will just feed into the next uh, uh, pick phase, uh, and then finally we'll we'll end with a end of best of three post-game interview. Uh, that is 
it. All right, so let's start with uh, Housed Horse of Team Devils. Uh, any words prior to this match? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Devils has a very special connection with uh, the team that we knocked out in the first round, the Chords. So I just want to say, in their honor, we're going to do our best to milk the enemy team here. And uh, yeah, good luck to the opponents. Excellent, excellent. All right, uh, bringing back that milk theme. <laughs> All right, uh, stay frosty. Uh, you are representing Name TBD up against uh, probably the uh, the favorites of this tournament, the dark horse against the uh, tournament favorites. Uh, how are you feeling? You no, know, I mean, I'm feeling pretty frosty right now. The only thing I can feeling say frosty. is that they won't be able to milk me because I'm not milkable. So that that going for me. Other than that, Dark Horse is his house horse. Let's see how it goes. Dark Horse is Dark Horse house versus horse? House Horse. I've never heard it called a house horse, but I get what you're saying. That's a is that a thing? I don't That's know. House horse. That's my username. <laughs> oh, he's house horse. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> That's so wow. You're a shift. You're good with very, words. Very Damn. Bad. Okay. Yeah, Stay frosty out there. Uh, all right. Um. All right, so I think we will go ahead and start things up. You guys already have the lobby set up? Yeah, lobby's open. We're just waiting to start the draft here. Excellent. Do we have uh, just checking a few things here? Cold and warm colors are set? Yeah, we do have that. Excellent. And then the map is not humongous, but uh, the smallest available 4v4 map size, right? Yep. Large excellent. map, observable, two-minute delay, gorge. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh... Are we going to use the draft link here, or do you want to just do what you did last time? Uh, let's let's do the drafting. Uh, if you're helping me, I, okay. I feel comfortable using it. I'm I'm a little bit too much of a boomer to figure it out myself, but uh, if you have uh, a link, I'll me... definitely observe it. Yeah, I'll just set up the preset here. <coughs> okay, that's there. It's in the chat. <coughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna hop down. Good luck to the other team. I click guest, right? Yes, yeah, you click guest. Good luck. Good luck. All right. So we have Devil's House Horse on one side and Emperor Sigismund on the other side. <laughs> Interesting. So Emperor Sigismund is the emperor uh, that founded the Order of the Dragon, which is one of the civilizations in the game, uh, the variant for the Holy Roman Empire. And Emperor Sigismund is actually a Hungarian, uh, originally a Hungarian emperor uh, that ended up becoming the Holy Roman Emperor. A little bit of interesting history there uh, for you. Uh, it, I'm, I'm a little bit curious why the guest captain's name is <laughs> Emperor Sigismund. Loki, I wonder if that's... Is that Corvinus related to this? I know Corvinus is also a very famous uh, Hungarian king, so and I, I can't tell. I don't actually know personally if Corvinus is Hungarian or not, but he I is. wonder if... Oh, he is? Okay, well, maybe that's... According to his Liquipedia, so... Okay, yeah. It seems like that is... Uh, maybe there's like a Hungarian theme going on with the uh, name TBD faction here. Uh, we do see three sieves picked on each side at this point. Reminder that um, all... All sieves are available, there's no bans, and duplicate sieves are allowed for the same team. So you, if, if you wanted to, you could have four Jean d'Arc players all at the same time. Uh, and it does look like we will finally re be revealing the sieves here, uh, and the players, will, I believe, will start their game at this point. Uh, it looks like for the Devils team, we have the Abbasid Dynasty, English, Jean d'Arc, and Mongols. Now, previously we saw the uh, Devils team play with Mongols. I think it was... um. Who was playing Mongols last? Was it? I think it was How's Horse actually playing the Mongols. Uh, we saw Jigglypuff on John Dark. We saw Zardes on English, and Abbasid Dynasty is new. I think. I think last game we saw uh, Mongols was not was playing. Was he playing Malians or something like that? I think that's right. Yep. So uh, the Wait, switch no. out. No, that's not right. What no, was he Malians playing? Malians on the other side. I don't recall now. Uh, Byzantine. Byzantine. Well, he was playing Byzantine. That's right. Yeah. So the Abbasid Dynasty is a little bit different, and uh, it could. It's still kind of a boomy style sieve, so maybe mm -hmm. um, maybe Mambo's just kind of kind of likes to play in that style. Uh, uh, but otherwise, a very similar pick to what we saw last time. Probably going to be very trade heavy. Yeah, on the other side, I think it's pretty interesting. Um, they kind of took a lot of what Team Cord ran in their game uh, with the English, the HRE, and the Malians. The one difference here being that they picked Roos uh, over. 
for Abbasid. So, um, Devils are going to come up against a similar comp, I would imagine, um, as far as Sibs go. Yeah, it looks like, uh, oh yeah, you're saying it's very similar to the previous, um, uh, Yeah, so team, the, the Phantom team Menace. TBD picked, yes. No, yeah. no, no. Team oh. TBD is very similar to Team Cord. Because oh, that's yeah, the Devils yeah. played in game one. Because they have the Holy Roman Empire, they have the Malians, and they have the English. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And yep. the dark horse here, in this case, is actually the Rus, uh, with that horse flag. Uh, let me go ahead and yeah. see if I can start joining the Observer. Uh, yeah. If the Observer yeah, delay is yeah. done I'm, yet. I'm loading it in. Okay, excellent, excellent. Sean Sullivan says, That Abbasid flag looks like it didn't load in. Lol. <laughs> Indeed. Uh... By the way, what's your reaction to the AoE announcement stream? I was like, nice, two sibs for AoE 3, then release at the end of the year, Sag. Okay, dude, AoE 3, I- I'm gonna tell you right now, okay? I-, I Prior to playing AoE 4, I played a shit ton of AoE 3. Like, every day, AoE 3 was my jam. Me, Rogerino, a lot of other folks on this, uh, on this Discord, we would all play AoE 3 together. And for a time, it was a good time, you know? I- I'm-, I- I'm very nostalgic about AoE 3. I, I played that growing up. Uh, but... I got pretty frustrated with how uh, my boys, the Incans, they were getting so screwed on every single patch. And I just, like, it, it just felt like when you're playing, especially when you're playing large team games, the European civs with the two factories, they get so many bonuses compared to the native civs. And I was like, I was looking like, am I just like, cost, like, am I role playing getting colonized? Is that, what the, is that what this is? Like, every single time I play the Incans, I'm just like, my, my, uh, my, my forts are just getting destroyed over and over again. Oh man, and then they kept on nerfing the Incans afterwards, and there was like no new content after the Knights of the Mediterranean uh, got got announced for quite a while. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, man. I, I I'm I'm actually kind of shocked that the uh, two new civs got announced for AoE three. I thought I thought development for that game just stopped. Uh, I'm a little bit shocked that it's Poland, Lithuania, and Denmark of all things. I don't think anyone was expecting Denmark. A lot of people were expecting Poland, 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 Lithuania, but um. Uh, the I think the bigger things that people were expecting were was the Moroccans because um, we only got two African civs previously and we have all the assets for the Moroccans uh, in in the in the in the historical campaign missions so it was a little bit interesting. I wanted to learn Inca ironically. I was mostly playing Germans and Maltese afterwards. Yeah, Germans and Maltese are a good time. Uh, definitely two of the more powerful civs in the game. Um, Incas are Maltese. Yeah. The not quite depots. the same yeah those gunpowder depots all right we are now in the game uh, already with the signal arrow we are beginning the game the con moving out in the front we have house horse the, the mongol players in the front this time uh so which mm-hmm. means that even if he gets pushed in he'll be able to quickly pack up his base and leave giving a lot of space but also buying himself and his team a lot of potential time uh after that we have devil's jigglypuff playing as Jean d'Arc once again, which is exactly what we saw last time, by the way. Uh, the house horse on the Mongols is what we saw last time as well. It seems like these players do have a main. Um, uh, Jigglypuff this time is closer to the front. Last time we saw Jean d'Arc was all the way in the far back, uh, basically delaying the night raids. Now it looks like he'll be able to get those night raids out just a little bit faster. Um, do you think there will be more variances for AoE 4? Almost certainly, almost certainly. Comparing, considering that they kept on harping about how 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 much they, how many copies of Sultan's Ascend they sold, I'm, I have no doubt there will be more variant civs. I'm personally looking forward to an English variant civ, hopefully based on the Crusades. I made a whole concept video about them, uh, which I think could be pretty viable. Uh, after that, we have Zardus on the English, which is the same civ that oh. same player that we saw last time. What's up? Just uh, just a bit of a scout race between the Khan and uh, Frosty's scout. I think they both came away with one of the pieces neck and neck uh, down this uh, kind of southeastern side. Damn. Okay. There's like there's action happening already in this match. Uh, we are in the finals after all. Um. All right. So we have the English in the third place, and then uh, oh my god, the luckiest spawn here. Uh, Mambo's playing the Abbasids. Uh, previously their Byzantine player that went to second TC. Uh. Obviously, yeah, Abbasid just in the back. Yep, Both getting games. getting the pocket, able to boom out. Uh, he's going to be very happy about that. For to investigate that. Uh, TBD, we do have a forward English player uh, with Frosty, uh, which is probably something that they're pretty happy about. English is going to be a very good forward uh, defense, be- uh, the for- defense bastion, uh, followed by Arakan on Rus, which means that if he places his Kremlin a little bit far- farther forward, he'll be able to secure a lot of defenses early on. Uh, and then followed by Risky, 
playing the H playing the Holy Roman Empire this time, so no no longer playing the Japanese. Uh, even though he did a very good job with playing the Japanese in the previous game, uh, I've never actually seen Risky's Holy Roman Empire. I didn't even know he played this. Civ. Um, this is going to be pretty exciting, potentially. Uh, and in the back, we have Corvinus on the Malians. Seems like Corvinus really likes the Malians. Uh, the, uh, and this is about the best distribution that you can ask for for uh, name TBD here. Yeah, uh, definitely going to be really nice to have um, uh, the Malians in the back able to get that cow boom off. I think pre in the previous game, Corvinus was suffering quite a few raids, so uh, him being in the back pocket player here is going to give him a lot more opportunity. He, do he is aging up with six villagers on that Monsecori. A little bit surprised to see that. Um, it uh, looks like our Roost player, Arakan, has run out of food here. We have eight villagers idling for quite a bit of time. Uh, and what else do I see here? Uh, Akan Chapel placed right next... Oh my god, this is a sexy Akan Chapel. In between two wood lines, a stone line, and the fattest gold, li uh, the fattest gold line ever, along with all the sheep here. Uh, a little bit of unfortunate placement with the houses here. Uh, gonna block up a few farms, but ultimately not that big of a deal when you have so many resources that you can take advantage of uh, all around it. Especially if you can get secure some uh, sheep. It doesn't look like he will have two too many sheep though um i hope they add more Astor's also aging up areas. with six here so yeah mongol also gonna rush up there age two okay interesting I, is the six villager age up thing a, is that the thing is that the strat i didn't know i mean i'm just thinking out loud but uh i would imagine for corvinus you know we, we saw it last game he went professional scout so maybe you know he goes up here gets professional scouts up and going early uh with the gold trickle yeah and then you can still accelerate uh, your econ with the <coughs> ear carcasses. Um, and I think there's a small hidden synergy here between uh, the Molly and the Roost player, um, where you know the Roost would just kill all the deer, and then the scouts don't have to kill any. They just go and pick them up. Yeah, there is one thing I'd like to call out here, which is uh, a couple interesting things. One is that Zardis is aging up with two villagers uh, as the English. Uh, so maybe going for a more delayed play, uh, not really looking to get those longbows out ASAP. Uh, instead of choosing to get farms out, might even go into more econ play afterwards. I'm, I'm a little bit curious about what direction he's going to go in. And the Mambos, the Abbasid player, has actually gone into the culture wing as as the Abbasids. He's already mining that stone, mm. trying to get that, ne that next town center up. Maybe? But I'm, oh I'm, no, he's on stone. Interesting, yeah. I'm a little bit surprised here. He's, he's going for stone uh, and going for that culture wing, uh, able to get his technologies uh, quite a bit cheaper. Usually when you go culture wing this early on, it, it signals a fast castle. But if you're if you're going for stone, you're also delaying your fast castle by going for another TC. So I'm a little bit curious what this means. It could just be a two TC into fast castle. Uh, getting those yeah. gulams out is going to be a huge swing in the mid game potentially. Um, I'm surprised not to see like military wing or econ wing in this case. I guess we just see one knight out here, by the way, or Jigglypuff. Uh, yes. Gonna idle the wood line a little bit. Oh, able to find the longbows. These longbows are not going to have any oh. recourse against this knight. Uh, that being said, this one guy in the back palings. is building that palings, nope. but the knight is able to oh, he does, oh, dodge he, he does it and him. Oh, ultimately he oh, hits the longbows it. don't shoot. Okay, interesting. That was a little bit of an interesting interaction. I, I, I think he approached the palings from behind and still uh, somehow got hit by it. Um, let's take a look at what else is going on on this map here. We do see Corvinus with some warrior scouts once again. I don't know if I see the professional scouts. doesn't have a mill out yet. Yeah, and it looks like the back Malian player once again has the woodline kind of uh, screwing him over a little bit on the, uh, on the housing placement here. Uh, and then, let's see, Risky here currently not producing any villagers looks like he's a little bit gated on food that seems to be the big thing that he's capped on oh warrior scouts once again grabbing deer oh this time warrior scouts grabbing deer for his hre player oh and the mm. ford oh whoa okay they're doing the malian and hre synergistic strat uh I, I okay i need to come up with a name for this but this is like what the burgermeister strat because it's like you know the germans like the burgers and the cows made of beef Anyways, the, the Malian player, a, a common strat that you'll see in some team games is that the Malian player will produce cows for their uh, HRE player to take advantage of because they have the Aachen Chapel, give, giving them much higher gather rates and very secure food, a very secure food line, meaning that they don't have to contest deer, they don't have to um, move out onto the map and uh, or even do a farm transition. Uh, so very, very interesting direction. I, I like seeing the team synergy uh, between the different players here. This is really exciting. Um, that being said, uh, there's not too much action going on in this early game. It looks like both teams are kind of content to just like uh, play it relatively slow here. We do see a raid coming in from Jigglypuff in the front here, but ultimately not trying to commit to it. Some Mongol uh, Keshiks, Keshiks are out coming too. out. 
looking around, seeing oh. if they can do some small raiding. John Dark running around trying to kill some boars, I assume. Uh, but in general, not going into too much here. The back of Bossed player, Mambos, has already set up a second TC. Uh, is he looking to also try to macro for an age up? Based on his current villager distribution, it suggests to me that he is trying to look for that uh, age up. He actually only just now gets his uh, golden age triggered, so a little bit delayed on the golden age compared to what uh, Bossed might normally try to do. Um, and uh, it looks like the English player Zardas is also content to... Wait, that's a very early blacksmith. I'm a little bit surprised by how early that blacksmith is. And he's just getting out longbows. Looks like all of that early... Uh, yeah. All that early... Burger Meister coming stuff. alive. The Burgrig is coming up here uh, for Risky in his base. Oh, and a devastating charge onto Corvinus's gold line. Able Ooh. to secure two villagers down from the Keshiks, but the Donzos will say, get out of my gold line, able to stop him from t taking dealing too much more damage. Uh, but that being said, a little bit of a disadvantage coming into uh, Corvinus now, having lost two villagers. Looks like the looks like the raid is trying to be teased once more. Uh, that being said, Burgrave Palace is up immediately. We see upgraded men arms coming out so and just many constant men arms, arms getting queued up right here. Looks Ooh. like there's going to be a timing attack. This is very reminiscent of uh, what the uh, uh, what the Cord team did to uh, what did to Devils in the first game. Uh, they're trying to go for that Burgrave timing attack. Hopefully, they will be able to secure the bag and actually uh, fully pull it in. Looks like Corvinus is actually doing warrior scouts for everybody. He's able to secure some deer for their uh, forward everybody. English player as well. What a yeah, nice guy! It's, it's like kind of like wait, can I make that joke? It's like the opposite of like Africa right now. You know, like. Africans That's are like, crazy. securing food donations, now they're giving the food donations to all the other European That's crazy. <laughs> country. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if we should be talking about yeah. Anyways, <laughs> maybe um, a little bit on PC. Um all right, uh, it looks like there is going to be a lot of movement here in the front. Yes. Uh charge There's happening. So much cav a bossed player starting to look for a market in the corner there. It will be immediately spotted out by a rockin uh, with his scout. Uh, unfortunately, not able to stop it. There is some teasing of a battle in the front here. Uh, knights, uh, Keshex and Royal Knights from both Jean d'Arc and the Mongol player means there's two cavalry civs here up against the one cavalry civ for the enemy team, Arakan being the only cavalry civ uh, with longbows and HRE uh, men at arms. Uh, being the composition. I'm really curious to see what Corvinus decides to invest in. It looks like so far this game he's been solely invested in microing for warrior scouts everywhere and securing a lot of deer uh, all over the map. Um, does have a barracks up, getting his donzels out. Doesn't look like he's fully committed to some kind of mid-game push like the rest of his team. Uh, it could be that this mid-game push is to secure some space for Corvinus to get his cow boom uh, up and running. But once he gets it up and running, I'm sure he will explode onto the map. Uh, Royal Knights moving out onto the side here. Jandar going for yet another boar. One thing Just that's pretty curious uh, that I've seen across all these games so far is that there's not a whole lot of spearmen, presis spearmen presence yeah. uh, in spite of a good yeah. amount of cav in general. Yep. I think uh, yeah, these teams so far are kind of just opting for kind of a mix of a front line. Yep. Um, and speaking of front that, line, uh, oh, yep. We do see uh, we do see Risky moving his ball of men at arms, committing to an there attack on the Mongol player House Horse, having to lose his town center here, uh, sorry, having to lose his tower here, uh, with uh, basically trying to trying to uh, what's the word? Uh, slowly defend against the men at arms push. We do have 13 villagers inside shooting those arrows. Uh, this kind of reminds no me. No siege of, though. Yeah, no siege. Currently just trying to. Trying to delay, uh, not taking too many losses just yet. Uh, that being said, there's a lot of Roost Knights on the field, a lot of uh, green longbows out onto the field. Not enough longbows coming out from the Zardas player. I'm not sure where all of his longbows went. Uh, just kind of skirmishing slowly. Happy to kite back uh, and, and just pull them deeper and deeper into Jigglypuff's base. Uh, this reminds me of the strategy uh, known as defense in depth, where or known as also known as elastic defense, where you kind of you kind of slowly pull back, and the whole time the enemy team's taking a lot of attritional damage from the town centers, uh, basically overextending themselves. It does look like Risky at this point has uh, kind of lost a lot of his men and armors ball, uh, pushing a little bit too deep, getting hit, uh, 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 getting skewered by spears and oh, arrows. Oh no, I think from they were they, 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 just, they just came back. They, they were they were doing other stuff. They're still there. These Which these HRE men arms. There's, there's still quite a few, I would say. There's a good ball, there's a good ball. Yeah, but, um, you know, on the other side, though, there have been 18 Mongol villagers that have uh, been forced to just live at home 
through this pandemic here. Yep, so, it looks like and the we're Mongol... Gonna see, we're going to see an evac potential. Oh, no, no it's, just, it's just the pastures Th for just now. Just the pastures for now, yep. Looks like he's content to have 15 villagers inside shooting these men at arms, not really dealing too much damage. Uh, big, a big cavalry battle on the right hand side, on the wing, um, between the Rus knights and the English and the French royal knights. Jean d'Arc is potentially at under threat here if he doesn't, uh, if they don't play safe. Looks yeah, like I think one thing that uh, Team TBD is doing a lot uh, better than uh, Team Cord is they are not just fighting these head-on fights with uh, John. Or they're choosing not to fight John's present because John uh, was level three at this pretty much this exact same time um, in the previous game, and that gave them a pretty significant advantage, I would say. That's true. Whereas I think right now John is running for her life. Is John is finally level three? Oh, uh, as I say that though, yeah, <laughs> she's able to take a huge. Oh, actually, is she gonna go down? No, nope. no, nope, I think not, she's, she's gonna survive. She lives. Fifteen That's health, crazy. able to run away. Uh, Arakan's and not gonna be very happy about that. As well. A lot of knights. Uh, on his side going down. That being said, keep in mind both teams have a back player that has not really shown themselves on the map too much yet. Uh, we do see the Abbasid, Abbasid player finally getting out those crossbowmen. It looks like he was able to go for a 2TC into a castle age with a... Oh, actually what? Okay, he went military wing uh, and finally is starting to pump out those crossbows. Uh, crossbows and archers seems to be the composition that the Abbasid player is going for. On the same, at the same time, I'm, I'm curious what Corvinus is going for. A lot of Malian villagers moving onto the map, protected by Donzos. Uh, Able yeah, to four finally ramps his... coming in here from uh, Frosty, so I think this is going to yep. look to be a more of a conclusive push coming in. Yeah, the problem is that Corbinus is still There's not... a lot of ranged units here for uh, Devils. Yeah, the, there's not really any military for coming out from Corbinus' side. It looks like Jean Drag will be able to get a flank Ooh. on the on the longbows. This might be a devastating no raid. The, the Rams are also going to be having a bad time. Just all four colors on one side and just not enough colors on the oh other side. Oh my gosh, there's so much XP here for Sean now. That's two Ram or four Rams going to go down here. Oh my god, yeah, all the Rams are going to go down. This is going to be a bit of a devastating swing for uh, team named TBD. Going to be forced to retreat here. Um, and obviously Frosty is still in H2, so no White Tower to retreat to specifically. Yep. And one thing I will call out here is that Corvin is... Masked. Corvinus is taking the score lead in the game, uh, while the rest of his team is still uh, having a little bit of difficulty, especially Stay Frosty and Arakan still in the 1k range. Uh, oh, never mind, actually Mambo is able to hit 3k now, actually far and away taking the biggest advantage in the game, uh, at least score-wise. Uh, just running those two TCs constantly booming, able to take resources on the side, uh, was trying to set up trade, looks like uh, it is... There are markets established, just not able to uh, fully set it up just yet. Jean Dark mm -hmm. looking to raid with knights and Jean's champions in the back line. Uh, quite a few Keshiks. Oh my god, quite a few Keshiks just cutting off the Roost Knight. Roost Knights are just running to their deaths over here. Able to get this around. Oh no. We are we are starting to see relics get picked up here though for uh, Risky. So that's one thing that's interesting. Um, you know, we did see the fast Burgrave come out from Risky, but um, the trade off is that. Despite being the first to castle, not necessarily drowning in relics, I don't think. Yep. Uh, we do see Frosty able to get his white tower, securing a defensive a defensive bastion in the in the mm -hmm. front here. A lot of his villagers did get idle on the left hand side, though. Uh, able to trying to put up farms here, but it's gonna be really dangerous to put up these farms. They're so exposed. At the least, he needs some kind of like uh, partial wall on the left hand side or something like that, maybe to cut off against this uh, against the stone stone line over here. I will say now, call out, um, Arakan actually just uh, disrupted. I mean, it was small trade, but you know, able to go into the corner there with a handful of knights. And yes. um, yeah, Pink actually going to trade north to this uh, neutral market in the middle of the map. So we'll see if that gets sussed out. Yes. Uh, There's going to be a red raid coming in as well. Yep. Jigglypuff able to deal a, quite a lot of damage onto Risky. Risky has a ton of uh, idle villagers at this point. Uh, just mm. basically not able to stop that John raid. Uh, at the same time, in the very front, Frosty losing his uh, losing his council, council hall ball. to just yeah. three rams. Uh, if Risky wanted to, he could just knock out these uh, rams. There are easily. a lot of units here coming in now. Um, I don't. Well, there are a lot of men at arms, I guess, but uh, a lot of crossbows on the other side. Um, this oh Abbasid boom God. is fully online, as far as I'm concerned. Yep, four 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 thousand and four hundred score at this point. Far and away the most uh, boomed out player in the game. Uh, it looks like Arakan is able to get some raids uh, in the back line here with his Roost Knights, but that's all he's doing is just buying time. Uh, for the rest power. of his team. It's teeing off, I will say. Yep. 
able to secure quite a few kills here. Uh, at this point, uh, if we look at the uh, game state, House Horse is the only uh, only team on doubles that is stuck in the Feudal Age, uh, only sitting at 2k score, uh, whereas Arakan is also at 2k score in the Feudal Age. So the Rus and the Mongol, both 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 factions are that have a lot Mambos, of advantages. Mambos, in Mambos is at 180 at 180 right now. He is sitting on almost 100 military pop. This is a about to be a massive, massive absent-driven push coming in from Team Doubles here. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit surprised that uh, oh, the Mongol and the, player. Oh, these sofas are kind of charging to their deaths here. Yep, I'm a little bit surprised that the Mongol to... player has not chosen to get up his curl tie. I feel like that might be the thing to wait for at this point. Uh, the curl tie, as we saw in the previous games, curl tie has a huge, makes, does a huge swing in these in these team games, able to buff up so many people. Arakan finally able to reach a castle age. Might be a little bit too late at this point. We're gonna see. One round does go down here. Uh, gonna trade a few, uh, one sofa so far. The and armies are pushing in. We do see a mango shot going, going in. Under. Oh my goodness. Absolutely no huge mango shot. Mango shots. There's way too many oh mutants here. Oh my god. The rams are going down. Shots here. Risky oh, pushing okay. up. Alright, rams go down. Yep. The villagers need to get inside though. Oh, oh my goodness. So no, many villagers that's a lot actually. of villagers dead. Y yep. Okay. Uh, uh, doesn't decide to charge through though. Overall, a so very good defense through. supported by this white tower here. It looks like the Abbasid yeah, player... They're going to turn tail, uh, potentially deal with this Roost raid coming in from Iraq. And, but uh, Ooh, yes. there was a sneaky Imperial Age up here coming in from Zardus, who once again decides to go with the Wingard Palace. We're going to see some Wingard oh, Rangers coming out here, yep. I think. I think they're maybe, again, just going to buy some time for the Mongol player to age up. He does have the resources and then again do a little timing push with the Coral Tie and all of these range units, which is just oh, so insane. A lot of Varakhan's villagers are caught out. Oh no, a lot of Frosty's villagers are caught out by these Keshiks. Oh. That's that's going to be pretty devastating, actually. Oh my god, mm. there's just so many knights out this onto this devastating. field. Yeah, I, don't think now, the player, I don't think the Roos player... I don't think the Roos player is going to be able to deal with this. Always feels bad when your raiding force is forced to play defense, and that's exactly what's happening here for Arakan. Uh, meanwhile, oh, there is about no. to be a absolute swarm of units coming in. Yeah. Uh, both the Abbasid and the uh, English player on the side of doubles just... Frosty is down waiting. to 38 vils at this point in the game. We are 20 minutes into the game, and having only 38 vils is going to be pretty difficult. He hasn't been able to get up a second town center that, this whole time. Keep in mind, the enemy English player, uh, yep. Zardus, was able to get his King's Palace up instead of a White Tower because he did not have to face any aggression. So there's going to be just that much more Scroll of the coming account. in. Sitting at this 91. Come. That being said, yeah, once the gets here. this whole time, Corvinus has been securing a massive siege advantage. That's six mangonels. Balls Six mangonels, but there are there are uh, you know three sprinkles here built on the side of Mambos. Probably could do with more, obviously. Um, but Corvin is finally raining. No, 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 no counter sprinkles. Or I'm sorry, there's one. Sorry, there's one uh, from Frosty. So we'll see if that is able to shrink the tide a little bit. Mambos at this point floating resources, able to go into the uh, Imperial Age if he wants to. I think he's debating if he decent should or raid, not. Decent raid for Corvinus uh, onto Mambos here, though. Yep, completely uh, exposed Not here. really paying attention. Oh, so many, so many dead. Uh, there, there we go. The garrisons are going to come in. But yeah, I think uh, it's just a matter of time before Devils decide to pull the trigger, and I think when they do... Uh, it's Looks TBD like the Roost Knights hard in the in the middle of the map are going to try to go for a raid as well. That's a lot of Roost Knights built up at this point. It's really... You know, one thing that's really interesting that I've been seeing in these games is that the teams insist on more or less mono comping. Uh, like each player does a, does a single comp instead mm -hmm. of doing a, a multiple uh, different units. Either like you only go cavalry or you only go archers with crossbows or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Risky's only going infantry spears with mixed in with men at arms, uh, which is like uh, it's kind of cool. You know, it's like each one of each player is essentially playing an individual wing. Um, which I think is pretty effective. Oh, a pretty big Roost raid here, able to hit a lot of villagers. Uh, we'll see if this actually uh, oh. turns out okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get away from this uh, ranged mass from the Abbasid player. Yeah, but uh, you know, time is ticking, and actually now it's gonna be uh, TBD with the first move. A huge amount of teal men at arms uh, backed up by these mangoes is gonna come in uh, okay. to house force space again. Mongol TC so, has to uh, pack up and move. Good. Yeah, that's a good distraction, I think, if anything, um, coming in there from Arakan. But now the Abbasid horde going to turn around, oh, and I think we're going to no. get our first big fight. A big thing, though, the Springles are a little bit behind. Yep, yep, there's so many Mangonels coming up. Corvin is able to raid in the back while also bringing these Mangonels in the front. We see a devastating oh, shot. That's going to be a Mangonels shot down. 
they shot the ramps. Yeah, um, not the target that you want to hit. This might be I another Mangonel going down. No, oh, they're, they're, they're just going to stand up. Second fire, Mangonel right. down. The mangoes are going to actually just shoot on the sprinkles. Shoot. Oh my god. Wait, and they just, they got a ball. They they just got a ball. smashed them. Oh my god, from the top wow. rope. Okay, still, still five hell? mangoes now in position of Corvinus. So. Oh! Oh no! Oh my oh, god! Oh, well, that Abbasid horde is... No that's like 20 there. units down in one shot, maybe even 30? Like, that's that crazy. Is, that is insane. That is insane. Absolutely huge shot. Looks like Mambo's just lost, he's down to nine, he's lost 94 units in total this game so far. All the yeah, while, I mean, Rock I has been earlier, he was sitting on near 100 military pop, he's down to 64, so a lot, losing about a third of his force. Oh my um, god. Losing a lot of villagers yeah. in the process as well, getting hit on both sides. Corvinus is just also defending in the back. Corvinus is just on his A yeah. game right now. Another oh devastating god, another Mangonel shot. shot. And now this Curl Tide is under threat. This Curl Tide gets raised, that's basically all that uh, oh House Horse is going to be able to offer. Oh my god, the, the, the projectiles are mid-air? Alright, it's still going to be able to live. But these yep. mangoes are gonna just roll up unchecked here, and now it's gonna be yellows ranged units. Oh, Wingard Rangers don't give a shit. There's no answer. To, there's no answer oh. to these mangoes. Another one. All right, the Krolltai is gonna get set up here, and there are a decent amount of uh, catches on the side. But again, oh my oh god, my the Wingard god. Rangers too. This is just a giant hammer straight down the gullet. Pat okay. Rap says it's a destruction, and I completely agree. They're, oh, what are these mangoes? They're like. They're, these are these are like trebuchet mangonel Af shots. African African mangonels. Yeah, uh, just going crazy. Well known, devastating. That one, damage. that one poor farmer just ate five mangoes. Okay, well, okay, gonna turn around. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's really interesting seeing just how much teamwork that uh, name TBD is using right here. Oh Keep my god! Mind. And the curl tie gonna get raised. That's there it. There's no curl tie now. The knight's so, trying to right, look for a flank, charge, not able to get it. Yep, gummed up here. And actually, the uh, structures of oh uh, my what Jigglypuff gonna work in favor what? of uh, Team TBD here because it's gonna be so hard to path onto the mangoes now. Mangoes are finally starting to go down. Yeah, might be too little, too late. The Abbasid able player able to get into the Imperial Age. Just still huge, devastating mangano shots, left and right. The the men are able look to come up this area here of teal and blue, just a vertical column coming down. Uh, so reinforcing as soon as they die as well. So much pressure now being put on team doubles here. Corbin is retreating with just two mangonels left at this point, but he's already done so much damage. We'll see whether or not he can actually take down this town center. It doesn't look like we have any rams here. The the longbow DPS needs to pull back just a little bit from uh, from Frosty here. So one thing I want to call out here that's been really cool this game is that there's been so much teamwork Ooh. between the... Uh, is, go down. Between or HRE go down. and the Malians. Remember we, earlier we saw uh, the Malian... The, the Malian player Corbinus was able to feed the HRE, the HRE player, player. Uh, cows to support his early game boom, and now the HRE player is basically risky is basically returning the favor, saying you can build those you can build as many mangoes as you want. I'm going to protect it with my body. I'm going to have a huge mass of infantry, and no one's going to be able to get past this uh, up until they finally amass enough sprinkles to pull things back. Uh, I'm curious to the see. The bleeding has stopped though, and the Krolpai is going to start getting rebuilt. Yeah. Uh, looks like we are finally getting tributes. 2,000 food received from Devil Zardus. Oh, so Z Zardus is actually being the breadbasket as the English player. Looks like there's just constant raids going on in the back. Not enough walls going on back here. The boss player just losing so many villagers. What is he at? Down yeah, He's down to 84 this whole time. And the Mongol player just not a doing like an entire migration. Actually, I wonder if the developers expected this. Just like the entire Mongol society picking up and leaving and moving. This is yeah. how many vills is this? There's 55 vills at least, just running back and forth here. Uh, that's so much idle time for yeah. House Horse, unfortunately. Oh my god! And, oh my god! Look on the right here. Uh, we can see that. Oh, that keep gets canceled just in time because they were about to get absolutely eclipsed by this uh, giant HRE mess gonna come in from Risky. It's gonna be in between two keeps here, but yeah, yeah. trying to get rid of some of these expos that um, Devils have set up on yep. the eastern side of the map. A red palace has been put up defending the uh, the town centers for Jigglypuff. Uh, gonna be a very good defensive bastion with another keep coming up in a forward position here. Yeah, but these keeps are gonna get raised so fast. HRE men and arms do not give a shit about keeps and this in this quantity. <laughs> Oh no, House Horse has been discovered. He's trying to fight Roost Knights with villagers at this point. Losing so oh, man. many in the process. It's just, oh, what is going on? He's actually getting in the way of the uh, French Knights trying to kill these guys. 
right. Yeah, I want to give a few shout out, out to Arak in here. I think he's had some really timely um, raids. Yeah, it's just constant. Completely disrupted uh, the game plan here for Devils. Um, one of which was we saw how the uninterrupted trade uh, was able to pay off in game one, but yep. uh, Arakan with that early raid able to force House Horse to trade suboptimally to the middle of the map here uh, yep. to this neutral market, and yeah, just not able to you know get the resources. That, that being said, he has been on one TC this whole time, and his villager count himself is only sitting at 64. So even though he's getting off a lot of good raids, his own economy is mm -hmm. not necessarily doing that much better. If we compare him to Mambo's, Mambo's is at 82 villagers, he's already at 200 pop. Yeah. Part of him doesn't even care at this point. He's late game of boss he's already hit the Imperial Age. He's got a lot of it, his technologies already at this point, so maybe it doesn't, he doesn't mind. I think one thing that uh, we need to look out for here is basically where is Coral Tai going to uh, move to? Um, that's you, you, you would imagine that you would need some uh, long range siege against uh you know the red palace this keep so i would imagine team tbd is kind of waiting on that before making their next major move yep um and that's gonna give uh it's gonna give devils a little bit of time in eastern rome up. you don't harass villagers but villagers harass you <laughs> that's funny well i mean we can just say in rus <laughs> in in soviet rus um, anyways, we have the Griot Barra coming up by Corvinus here, able to finally go into H4. The first time we're seeing a Malian player hit H4 in this tournament. Uh, still has a lot of Mangonels up in the front. Uh, really impressed by his micro on the sides as well, trying to defend against these Keshik raids. Uh, I will say that the, in general, not too many walls are being prioritized in this game. Uh, trade is slowly starting to be developed by both teams at this point, uh, but neither side has any kind of impactful trade. Oh, I will say though that the Mongol player, uh, House Horse, has been able to trade pretty effectively on the far right side, uh, trading with a neutral yeah. trade post here. Yeah, that's what he's been forced to trade to. I see. This it's not. It's not. It's not max game. distance. That's the only thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's better. It's definitely better than nothing. Yeah. At the same time, um, they do have a good foothold here. Take a look at this English society from Yellow here. Um, 200 pop, sitting at 9,000 score, so many buildings on the far right side, uh, so many keep seers as, as well, just completely defending, locking down this area, not picking up the relics, but now sending a rush of men at arms, as, as well as as well as well Weingarten Rangers, sieging down this hunting well, cabin. We have a, a Keshe Grade coming in onto the very far back, we'll see if uh, Rocking can deal with it. I mean, it doesn't seem like anybody's home here for Corbinus, so I'm being honest. Yep. Doesn't seem to do too much here. Yeah, gonna, gonna I, I'm, run out here. I'm mostly worried about these offenses picking up on the side. Uh, looks like Frosty's going to be trying to build a Berkshire Palace on the far left side, uh, trying to secure against that Jean d'Arc. Um, but it's going to be difficult. He only has archers to try to fight against all of these uh, all these knights. At, at the same time, on the far oh, right hey, we side... Have, we have, we have, we have, we have uh, red villagers taking out this uh, one elite Roost Knight. <laughs> He's got the surround. Uh, okay. Alright, yeah, we'll deal with this. Sorry, this okay, on the, on the far right side, we see an army of Weingart Rangers along with Imperial Elite Men in Arms. Oh, actually, this is going to be potentially devastating. Yes, pushing straight the into the trade line, killing some blue villagers already. And keep in mind, uh, Arakan needs every villager he can muster. He's still only on 1 TC, not able to get his economy up this Ooh. whole time. Yeah, we see the makings of uh, stone walls coming out here from Corbin to yes. try to further secure this. Uh, so that should get addressed in short order. Um, the thing though here is there have been a lot of Abbasid archers just waiting, waiting for them to push the go button. Um, so every second that passes is another second for, as we see, Frosty age up here. Um, so everybody I think is an imp now. That was the last player to not be an Imperial. And uh, now they're going to have to push into an Elsbach palace. Uh, it does look like the uh, the Weingarten Rangers were able to deal with the uh, all the sofas that Corbin has sent against them. Oh wow! These villagers are just oh my God, absolutely yeah. mowed down over here. Oh, oh my goodness. no! They need to deal with this. This this needs to be top priority. At the same time, Corvinus is getting a little bit of a raid from a single men at arms in his base. Uh, not really paying attention to that area. I wonder. Actually, oh, can I look at where players are focusing on? Yeah, you can. Just turn off the free camera. Oh, interesting. Okay. okay. It's just gonna look jittery, but yeah. He's he's not looking on the right side. It looks like. Oh my god. 
Zardus is getting such an advantage on this right side, able to shut down, completely shut down the and trade And now, over here. yeah, Mongol gonna try to get in on the fun here. Some Keshex do leak through along with the Khan. Yep. Corvinus has pulled his infantry army all the way back here to try to deal oh with my uh, try to deal with Zardus's raid. But if if Corvinus is here, he's not in the front line. It looks like Jean Dark is pushing in on uh, Frosty up here in the front, along with uh, Mambos. The the Abbasid archers actually, are yeah. Mambos is now going to send a little foraging expedition here. Attacking uh, on both the units. left and the right side. Oh, these mangoes are going to go down. These mangoes are going to for sure go down. Uh, Tricky Puck spots this, dives onto it almost oh, immediately no. with John and her riders. One, two, there. Oh, now there are green mangoes under threat here too. This is going to be. Oh my goodness. There are oh, seven there's range, so many siege rounds seven here. Seven siege units. Okay, there's a little bit of split that comes out. But, oh my god, that's devastating. That's at least two thousand. Oh, that's 3,000 gold worth of resource or 3,000 resources worth of units just gone in an instant here. Yep. Wow. The Devils just. Oh my god. Devils is taking control of the game right now. All thanks to Zardis' raid on the timely, far right side. Such timely raids. Um, just catching Team TBD with oh, their pants down, no. really. Yep. Yep. Raids, raids coming in. Abbasid Archers raiding uh, Risky's villager line. Killing his farmers. Mongol, Mongol Keshex in the Corvinus' back line. And that is the surrender. Yep, the game is wow. uh, the game is wow. over. Wow! Wow! A bang, but with a whisper, really. Yeah, that was surprising. It's just so there wasn't like a, a big decisive match that ended the game. It was more just like raids coming in from every single angle, and uh, just a really well positioned attack by uh, by Zardis over there on the far right side that just led to a cascading series of failures on on um, Team DBD side. Mm hmm. Unfortunately, both Stay Frosty and Arakan, their villager counts are just low the entire time. They were able to get some good raids off, but just not able to keep up with their economies compared to uh, Team Doubles. Very unfortunate. Yeah, really there. well played once again by Team Doubles on both sides. Really, um, Zardis that Mango push was insane once again. Uh, yeah, by Zardis far, with, the, with the Wingard Rangers, the 80 carry of this game, uh, 355 <laughs> kills. In the previous game, he had 600 kills. So. Definitely the player to watch out for. Um, all right, so uh, Roger, you were saying that we should not do post game interviews and just go straight. I think into just the give them match. some time. Yeah. J well, uh, yeah. I mean, if they're both ready, then we could just get into uh, game two or give them a couple more minutes to kind of. Are you sure? I, you know. I think we should do a, like a like a quick post game chat after that. Oh, okay, sure. All right, yeah. let's let's just do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pull in uh, our our team captains here. <clears throat> Uh, we have yeah, Housed Horse. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm pulling you in oh, here. Uh, and I'm also yeah. going to pull in Stay Frosty as well. Uh, we'll do a quick uh, post-game chat, and then we'll lead straight into our next game. Um, all right. So, uh, Housed Horse, uh, you you guys won this game in a way that was a little bit unexpected. You guys weren't able to get your trade up, but uh, you were able to get into the Imperial Age, especially with uh, Zardas able to get those Wineguard Raiders out. How are you feeling about that game? Uh, it was very messy compared to even the first one, but yep. I felt like we were okay once we ended up stabilizing. I managed to save my entire eco, which was really, really huge. Yeah, we noticed uh, that. the ability of the Mongols to pack up and walk away. Yeah, that <laughs> huge gang of Mongol villagers just roaming. Yeah, unfortunately I had to do a bit of a nomadic trip around the entire map, but I ended up settling <laughs> in a nice little coach. No, you just role-playing the Civ. Uh, role-playing the Civ. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so very messy game, well played by the enemy team, but uh, I think in the end we were just able to kind of raid them to death and do a big doom push and it worked out. Yep. Awesome. And stay frosty. Uh, you guys definitely had the advantage at certain points in this game, uh, able to push into uh, uh, both push House Horse out of out of his original base, as well as push into Jigglypuff's base as well. Um, but ultimately, I think the economic uh, back end, th sorry, the economic back end that was powering your civilizations was uh, not holding up compared to the enemy team. How are you feeling about that first game? Uh, feeling a little. Overwhelmed. I uh, I lost. Um, I personally lost a lot of ills in really dumb ways, and uh, that really that really took on me, <laughs> took a toll on me mentally and in the game. So mm -hmm. that really brought me down. But I'm not out the fight. The game's still going. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure Absolutely. Okay, a quick shout out to your farms. You had some very scenic looking farms with the walls and everything. You had like nice little boxes for every single uh, That's farm colony. And I wasn't taking the chances with the Kashyyyks. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks very, looks very nice. You are you are up, you. up against uh, one of the best uh, team teams in competitive AOE four. So uh, well, keep that in mind. An honor. I'd rather play against these guys than um, you know someone in I don't know in platinum. This is you know it's it's not just just a tournament, but it's also just like you know it's in some way it's it's a really good practice for all of us. I think you know. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Good learning experience. All right. So with that said, we will go into our next game. Uh, we'll do the same drafting thing. Uh, House Horse, do you mind setting up the link again for that? Yes, I can do that. Just a moment. Awesome. And is uh, someone al already setting up the custom lobby? I've got a lobby set up. I haven't invited anybody yet, though. Okay. I'll Thank you for organizing all this. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, thank you. All right, draft link is up. I'm going to hop down now with my team, and I'll send you guys the invite shortly. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a look and see what the draft is going to look like. Uh, all right. Just yeah, we, we already see, uh, you know, the favored, I think, strategy here for the uh, Devils, you know, a big timing push uh, in combination with the Curl Tie. Um, but we saw that even though that wasn't able to necessarily be their avenue to victory, that they can adapt uh, with these really, really devastating raids and it you, completely disrupted the tempo here for tbd you, you know the one thing i didn't expect to see uh in this tournament as much as i am is how powerful those wine guard raiders are like the fact that you can just get those wine guard like in in a team game you can protect yourself uh with other players and so you can get that wine guard rager mass up as the english player and once you do mm -hmm. there's just nothing that can stop those guys like uh, it's not something that you yeah, ever see feels in, that way yeah, it's not something not, not something you ever see in one v ones. The Berkshire is just usually mm -hmm. so much more impactful. But in a team game, mm -hmm. the map is so big that the Berkshire, yes, while it does secure a lot of ground, it's actually not as impactful as you know 30, 40, 50 uh, wine guard ragers running into your backline, uh, just absolutely murdering all your sofas, murdering all your trade, murdering all your villagers. Um, and it's been really exciting seeing that. I'm wondering if uh, name name TBD will also learn a couple things from uh, from this. And while this is while this draft is happening, I wonder if I can play some music um, just to spice things up a little bit. The, uh, yeah, I'm curious if they're gonna if they have another game plan. You know, um, it would be interesting to see them basically completely switch up the strategy um, now that they have made a name for themselves, if you will, um, and see if they can could just throw them for a loop. Yeah, the team without a name definitely has a name now, uh, and it looks like we have our sieves picked. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and message and see if everyone's ready to start. Just Tracker says, Chili Empire, you going to do other tournaments for other maps as well? You know, the only other map that I like in this game is, uh, oh fuck, what's it called? What's that Hide map out? that we like? Hideout. Yeah, Hideout is a really fun map. So if I do, if I do do another tournament, maybe, maybe it's Hideout. But the difficulty with Hideout is that it, it's not all four, all four players playing to get, working together. It's two, two, two v twos on each side. So it's a little bit harder to cast, and we're gonna have to jump between one side and the other. So. Potentially uh, one of the issues. Windows 11 users spotted. Is Windows 11 bad? The Mexico theme? I need a 4v4 team man. I didn't want to sign up without any members I played with, but enjoying the stream so far. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream, Okie Dokie. I, wait, where have I seen Okie Dokie before? Have we played against Okie Dokie before? He, he's, he's, he's been in the stream. He's been, he's been in the stream, in the stream before, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so if we take a look at the, uh, the sieves here, uh, actually, did the game get set up already? Let's take a look. Looks like they're still waiting in lobby, so we'll we'll wait and see shortly. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like they are starting starting now. Um, we do have four: the Devils team, English, Mongols, John Dark once again, and Byzantines. The classic comp they used in their first uh, in their first match. And four: uh, name TBD. We have English, Jushi's Legacy, Rus, and Japanese. So we did see a rocket on Roos quite a few times, and we saw Risky in Japanese. Uh, we saw um, we saw Frosty on English, and I'm guessing that the Jushi's Legacy is actually Corvinus switching over from Malians to Jushi's Legacy. Maybe he wants uh, to play a more broken sieve to show Team Devils well, what for. If we had a time machine and went back for the patch, not that broken anymore. 
That's true. They, they are far less oppressive than, uh, than before at this point. Uh, still waiting to see if I can join the observer mode, and it doesn't seem like I can do it just yet. Uh, MG says, can't you make your own maps in this game? You know, you can, but I tried the map editor and it's a little bit obtuse to figure out, especially if you want to do any kind of procedural generation. Uh, it's not super straightforward. If you want to do create a static map, it's, it's okay, but I feel like it's more interesting to create uh, procedurally generated maps. So I, I do have, that being said, I have been working on some map designs that kind of take inspiration from the Gorge model that I think would be pretty fun if uh, someone in the community were to implement them. I would love to host tournaments related to that, um, but that's a discussion for later down the line. Uh, I'm Ami curious if there are maps that aren't in the competitive pools that are more like Gorge. Yeah, yeah, like if someone else has already created it. It's actually really hard to tell. Oh, no, no, I just mean there are other maps, you know, in a, like in the quick play map, uh, playlist that True. Oh, or yeah. that might potentially be. Yeah. That being, yeah. There's a lot of maps into. that we haven't tried yet. Uh, Arnie yeah. Badbury says, "Are China slash Auto banned or just not good in four v fours? Neither are banned. And actually, Ottoman. I'm a little bit surprised that it hasn't been picked this whole time. Yeah, uh, me too, actually. Considering the fact that they're pretty fucking broken when it comes to team games. They are obviously like y we saw the effectiveness of, Cor of Corvinus's mass uh, mangonels. Um, it, uh, you think it'd be a shoe, oh, and especially Turtle if you get into late game. Hell no. Hell no. Turtle Ridge is also pretty center focused. Yeah, Turtle Ridge is it's center focused, but I I, I feel like it's not as it's inverse hideout. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's as interesting. In a, in, 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 a, in a bad way, in my opinion. But I mean, like yeah, that that is an example. I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Everyone not a whole lot of rating potential. Off. Yeah, I feel like it's just kind of like a like a mid map slog in in that case. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm not too inspired by Turtle Ridge. That said, can anyone hire some Inquisitors? I will send some Desperados. Is that an AoE 2 Wrong reference? Game. 3, I think. No? <clears throat> oh, oh, wait. Is it? Is it? Desperados? Yeah, yeah. They're like the uh, the cowboy mercenaries that you can hire from the um, the saloon or yeah. whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Inquisitors? Wait, is, do people use Inquisitors in Desperados? I'm not too familiar with AoE 3 meta nowadays. What I remember is the uh, the Swedish giant giant grenadiers. Oh man, those guys were broken as all heck. Holy crap. Alright, we are 15 seconds away from getting into the game now. We, let's take a look at the civs here. We, uh, it looks like all the players that we expect to be playing the civs are exactly what we would expect. Corvinus 1 now moving on to Jushi's Legacy. And uh, I forgot the M player name. Mambos moving on to Byzantines uh, instead of Bossid. Uh, pretty standard picks as we've been expecting. Uh, everyone's basically playing in their comfort zone. Uh, you know, I think if we do this again in the future, it would be interesting to see how Civ bans work, uh, and because that would force certain mm -hmm. players to play off of their uh, their comfort picks. Yeah, might mix up things a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately, I just I don't think there's like a, a competitive standard um, for pick bans, so we would have to just basically think about things that would be potentially balanced. Yeah, we get to um, define it. First and balanced. But yeah, uh, House Taurus here going to be spawning in the front again. Although the uh, TC placement is a lot more favorable this time. Able to park his TC in between oh, his wood mine no. and his gold mine. Arakan, uh getting his deer sniped out by the Mongol Khan. Uh, oh. Very unfortunate. Also, the entire time he's been pushing his deer in a way that like they're they're not really easy to grab. Uh, I I believe previously we saw a rock and just build a hunting cabin right next to that deer line, but now he's not gonna be able to do that because these deer are so spread out. They're also in a very forward position, which is a bit unfortunate. That being said, if Corvinus does decide to go for uh, professional scouts again, uh, we will be able to secure those deer once again. That perhaps. would be really interesting to see professional juicy scouts. Is professional juicy scouts not a thing? Well, I don't think. You know, what's interesting is that we've seen professional scouts in every single game. I. Think. Think we've played so far uh, mostly out of Corvinus, but I mean, even in game one, we saw professional scouts, I believe. Yeah, unfortunately, um, that early uh, scout shenanigans did lead to Arakan getting housed, meaning that his villager count is going to be just slightly delayed, which is not the biggest issue, but it's small, dis even small disadvantages can compound in a game this competitive. Yeah, and uh, MG asks how many more games this is a best of three, so if uh, TPD is able to pull this one out, we will have a game three. Yep, this is if game not, two of the be best it. of three. This could be our final game of the tournament. Uh, if uh, team name TBD is uh, not going to win this game, but we yeah. will have to see. 
Yeah. Um, and as far as distribution goes, Devil is going to low roll just ever so slightly. Their English player is in the far back. Um, John also going to be far away from the front line. So, yeah. Uh, Byzantine not going to be able to fully boom out, you would imagine. Getting more towards the front. And for TBD, Bruce in the front is, I mean, decent, I would say. And English is also close enough. So, I think just not from the outset. Their, uh, their oh yeah, the fact that to be a little bit better. We have a back Jushi is really nice, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that. Um, the back English is a little bit sad, but that being said, we've we've seen the way Zardis plays. He's actually probably pretty happy playing in the back. Uh, he goes for a more econ heavy English compared to uh, other opponents. Um, yeah. The forward Mongol again, very good position. Uh, he can just retreat his base. Yeah. I think one thing we've seen so far is that. There's not going to be a whole lot of stuff happening before 10 minutes, so you know people are going to be able to pretty easily uh, hit their castle timings if they decide to go fast castle. Uh, we'll see though if there's going to be any adjustments, if there are going to be maybe some more earlier three 10 minute pushes coming in, and maybe that can be what disrupts the tempo and maybe the meta of these games. Yeah, it's interesting, like, players, like, when we play Gorge uh, as a team, oh, whoa, actually, wait, what the heck? This this central sacred site is so favored towards uh, the top team. Uh, teal, yeah. yeah. It's right, it's like, the Kremlin's right on that sacred site. That's kind of interesting. I mean, I think one thing you had to consider, though, is that uh, the I think the Mongol TC would normally be a little bit more forward than it is. If you look at that uh, forward straggler, that's probably where a TC would spawn if it wasn't a Mongol TC. Uh, I see. I see. Why. Next to the berries, maybe. Yeah, yeah, so it moved back a little bit, I think, on spawn. Oh, uh, I see, I see. Oh, yeah, he actually moved on to his gold line. Uh, mm -hmm. That explains a lot. Okay. He's, he is giving a little bit of ground, but as a result, he is getting a lot more security as well. Uh, this forward Kremlin in a very good position, able to get so much vision of the entire front swath of the map, uh, able to see both mm. sides. If, if any ca kind of cavalry are, are trying to raid in from the sides, this Kremlin will spot it long in advance. Um, I was saying earlier that when we play uh, uh, team ranked on Gorge, um, one of the things that we're looking for is basically aggro from the first minute. The moment you hit feudal, those longbows should start raiding uh, the enemy team, sniping out those villagers on the wood line, sniping out those villagers on the berries. Uh, it doesn't look like teams in this game have been trying to do that at all, though. Um, playing far more preferring to play conservatively, which I think is uh, pretty interesting. Yeah. Some minor differences, uh, we did see uh, House Horse age up with six last time, uh, now only age up with four, which I think also further lends credence to that argument. They are probably looking to play a little bit slower than they did uh, in the previous game. Mm -hmm. That being said, two Keshiks are being produced right now. We are starting to see uh, Raiders coming out onto the field pretty soon. Um, mm -hmm. Not any longbows coming out from Zardis. Yeah. Uh, interesting for Corvinus here. Um, is on st actually well did have two on stone, but now we're gonna take one of them off. So I don't know if he's gonna go for the two TC build. He might uh, be building a cistern is, with it's that. Going slow. <laughs> with that military count. Where is his? Oh, uh, is, no, Corvinus is on Yeah. yeah I, I, I know. I'm making a joke that. Uh, 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 his meditation gardens is not not that ideal. It's visible. mostly getting food. It is, uh, so I think there's a little bit of a, yeah, this what? is feeling the nerve Wait, what is this? He could... He's sending an Imperial official all the way up to the front. Oh, probably going to buff up the archer range all the way in the front here. Uh, oh, okay, looking so to there is going to be early, there is going to be early action. Yeah. Yep. And it no, does look uh, like... No, uh, what's it called here? Going to be coming out. Yeah, the no scouting eagle power. from the Khan is able to spot out the Juganu and the longbows massing up here. Uh, it yeah, does look like... they're going to go a lot earlier. Wait, why is Arakan... Arakan is doing the Great Migration with his villagers, trying to secure that food on the deer on the front. I'm a little bit surprised that he would want to do that. That's weird. Would you not just build maybe a- Maybe he thought he was, uh, maybe he thought he was queuing a hunting cabin. Maybe, but yeah. That's maybe. a little bit weird that he would, uh, make his villagers yeah. walk this far, all the way back to his TC. This is like twice the distance that you would actually even find acceptable. Um, I really like, uh, Corvinus's base back here. It's very well defended, uh, saying, I don't want to get raided at all this game. Uh, mm -hmm. walls up his wood line, walls up his berries. Um, able to just secure his uh, Druganu pump. Quite a bit of uh, range units already out here, though, for name TBD. Yep. So, um, we'll see. Uh, let's do a yep. quick blacksmith check, see if they have uh, any ram builders. Obviously, 
Uh, no Abyssid means no free ram tech. Four cisterns already uh, up for uh, for Mambos here. Two barracks along with the mercenary house. This guy's not going to be floating any olive oil, unlike me. Uh, Blacksmith's up for both the Byzantine player and the English player, Azardis. Uh, you know, one thing I'm really surprised by compared to when we oh, play... Right, hold on, Ganga, Ganga, Ganga Kashuk coming in now for... Uh... Oh. Just, there, there's so many, so much more of a focus on getting those early blacksmiths out. I'm kind of surprised by that. Um, I feel like when we play, we never like aim for blacksmiths this early on. We'd rather get some units out first. Um, so I'm mm. a little bit surprised and confused. I'm not sure if it's necessarily a good strategy because what good is a blacksmith upgrade if you don't have units that can actually benefit from it? Um, I'd rather spend those resources on more units in the early game, at least I think. Uh, no response. At this point, it's solid. Uh, but yeah, I think. Uh... This village this is, looks like it might be going down soon. There is a sc nah, imperial they're, they're, official. They're, oh wait, no, this, those are those, oh, those are French knights. Why, yeah, why wait, is he... this is a lot of pressure going to be put onto. Um, and he's trying to he's trying to inspect some spears out. He's turning Russian spears out. But there was an imperial official sitting inside the village for the longest time. Oh, I'm guessing I'm guessing he just uh, garrisoned the nearest uh, to the nearest place. Yeah, just happened to be the place. Okay. Now let's all. get the bounty. Risky, so, able uh, to hit the castle age. D does a. Uh, Japanese fast castle timing, able to start pumping out some mounted samurai. At the same time, Arakan, uh, able to get some Roost knights out, looking to raid the back line. Finally, putting some pressure onto the Devils team, uh, considering that Devils uh, has two been rams coming out, putting a lot of pressure the entire as well. time. So, looking to go soon. Yep, two rams coming out. Looks like there might be some fighting here pretty soon. Oh, In the meantime, does the Congo down here? Oh my goodness, it does not. Yeah. Wow. Wow, oh. wow, wow. Wait, uh, wait, what's your time at right now? Uh, 840, 850. Are you able to, uh, speed up? yeah, speed up to live? You're, you're like maybe 12 seconds behind Eight, me. Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine. Yeah. 903. Yeah, excellent. I'm, I'm at 912, uh, just now. Oh. Okay, you're well ahead of me for some reason. I can't go with beyond this. But, anyways, keep going. I've seen some Dutch players sometimes playing Mercs, but mostly Highlanders right now. Are Highlanders that good? I'm a little bit surprised. Then again, I'm not Grandmaster in AoE. Okay, uh, more raids coming up in the back here. Roost Knights able to hit some gold miners, not doing too much damage to uh, our English player here. Uh, ultimately, still playing pretty conservatively, focusing on longbows. You know, I see the... Okay, there we go. There's the longbow mass. 20 longbows out right now uh, for our English player. At the same time, our Byzantine player going for Limitane mixed in with uh, Javelin Thrower's. Pretty good comp here. Really, really nice here. Just a lot of raids happening on the sides. I will call out that I don't see any professional scouts this game. Mm. It doesn't seem like that was that was the focus this time around. Uh, Risky yeah. finally showing what he's made out of. Uh, hasn't ever played uh, for the Japanese Fast Castle into Mounted Samurai before. Now looking to raid all over the map. Uh, I've yet to see him make any major connection here if we take a look at the military count here uh we do see that nobody's really lost that many units it looks like a has been losing a few units here and there but he's also killed a fair number of units now he just loses two knights to those longbows oh man. okay we see movement here in the front though the archer mask gonna start walking up here yep javelin thrower is trying to tee off against the druganu uh not gonna be able to do enough oh. just because there's so many more archers the rams are not moving up yet from corpinus yep I think I think they're just teasing it out, seeing seeing what they can do, seeing what they can get away with here. Uh, it does look like. Oh man, these uh, Limitani are gonna get shredded. Yep, a lot of them went down there. Yeah, shield wall or not, um, they still take some damage. The advantage definitely leans towards uh, name TBD right now, but it doesn't yeah. seem like they're committing. They're choosing to mass up more right now. There's only two, keep in mind, there's only two armies massed up here. Uh, Risky's mm -hmm. playing off to the side and Arakan's playing off to the side. Neither player is going for spears. I, Sardis it, does have a decent longbow mass, but it's not at the front line just yet. Yeah, was there... Did, did like, people hear a rule that like you're not allowed to mix comps or something like that? Is that like why no one's mis mixing their comps? Keep in mind... Yeah, it is kind of interesting, right? Yeah. We talked I, about this earlier. You'd no, think there'd no be spears. like spears mixed in here. Yeah, maybe um, that was something we don't. It's better to have more archers. Yeah. Archers are king. Uh, more outposts uh, and counting here, though, for uh, <laughs> Housed Horse here up in the front. Yeah. So he's getting ready. 
A um, lot of Mongol villagers going down as the Rams come up. On the left side, Jean Dark is looking to raid, uh, but not able to find too much other than a single Roost Knight. The the Rams are pouring in. That's five Rams going down. That's 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 five Rams going to take down a Mongol outpost. The first Mongol outpost goes down, and that is the first building blood of the game. That Roost Knight was finally taken care of on the side here. Uh, oh the Mongol... Oh, wait. Whoa, the Rams are going straight for the TC, not choosing to go for the, the towers on the side first. The Limitane and the Longbows are pushing up. Juicy's Legacy, they're... Oh, no. The Keshuk's get a sur complete surround on those Juganu. The oh. Longbows in the back are able to push them off. The Risky's trying to fight off uh, John Dark Knights with his Mounted Samurai, but his Mounted Samurai are too weak at this point. Keep in mind, Risky's the only player that hit the Castle Age in this game. His score is definitely taking an advantage right now, but will it be an will that advantage be enough? I, I'm not sure. There's so many archers coming out from Zardus in the back here uh, that they're able to push back against the offensive power of this uh, of this yeah. this forward attack by Name TVD. They actually have to. Retreat. The Lombos are able to kind of maintain their mass here, courtesy of their range. But a lot of Juganu did go down. There are still four Rams here, though, four Corvinus, so they can go again. Um, but. Yeah, they just like the front line, the Limitane, uh, if nothing else, are really good bullet sponges. Yeah, they're so There are no bullet so sponges on the side of TBD. Yeah, I'm not sure what the strategy here is. It does look like there's a, there's a few effective raids from Iraq and uh, a few knights here and there that are getting getting some villager idle time, but not able to do too much devastating damage. Risky, with his mounted samurai, charging up in the front. John Dark has fallen off on, on the side here, uh, finally taken out by Iraq, and, and it oh, looks this like... Is, this is good, potentially. They're no, going for uh, another up here just yet. Okay, now the Juganu numbers are lacking though from Corvinus, so it's basically just longbows and mounted samurai here. Yeah, the big question on my mind right now is what is Corvinus focused on if he's not uh, massing more Juganu? Is he prioritizing something else? Yeah, one big thing is we have to keep in mind here Corvinus elected not to boom out here despite being a back Jushi player, so um, the lack of early, you know, conversions courtesy of this military pressure means that he is going to be behind compared to Zardus. For example, who actually also is on one. Actually, that's really interesting. Both back players decided off, off for one TC. So, yep. if we look at yeah, Corvus, not a lot of really, boom in this game. Villagers count, he's at 47 villagers compared to Zardus, who's at 42. So he does have a small advantage. That being said, Zardus is going for a King's Palace. We do see that he likes that King's Palace. At the same time, there is going to be a, a Mounted Samurai raid in the back. It will briefly stop this... Uh, stop this this landmark from going up. Corvinus in yeah, the front. Ram, Ram, Ram's moving up, but... Uh, don't know if this is the best one. We'll see. Alright, how are we gonna go down again? Some woodline build is gonna get taken out. And there are two more that are also being built in the back. So we'll hey, see if they can get this, dealt with here. This might be it for the uh, for this town center here. This Mongol player might need to pack up. I, if I was House Horse, I would not be trying to stay this out. 15 villagers idling in here is not gonna be doing him many many favors here. Uh, especially if, yeah. if you take a look at his economy. Oh, actually, oh, when you pack up the town center, all your villagers just hop out and they get completely exposed. That's yeah, that would be crazy otherwise. It's not the fucking uh, like a bus the South African like warrior wagon or the villager wagon things. So. Oh, yep. Age of Empires 3 callbacks. We love those. Um, yeah. We do see all right, that. So, evac, not not a full kill, but an evac coming out. Yeah, our Mongol player course. is down to 29 vills. Not something oh that you want to see here for the first time ever. I think, I think House Horse is actually taking a devastating loss despite also packing up here. Uh, losing a lot of towers, losing a lot of uh pastures at the same time a lot of villagers yeah. also kind of an so many rams here. still alive here from core still oh. six six rams i think zardis's longbows and. facing off against mounted samurai oh man getting just cut down yeah this is a really nice flank coming in from risky and uh, not able to really coalesce with the limitane means that the longbows are going to be cut down on mass here yep uh, Corvinus's battery wheels are now taking out uh, the first of many cisterns. Uh, Risky's still the only. Uh, actually, now two players have entered into Castle Age, yeah, but Mongos. Risky has been Castle Age for quite a long time now. I, I wonder if he even got the. Did he get the relics as well? Yeah, it looks uh, like he got quite a few relics as well this whole time. Yeah. He hasn't been idling. Uh, Mounted Samurai just getting so much of an advantage. Um, at the same time, uh, Frosty doing a great job keeping up his longbow mass, building forward towers as well with. Uh, okay, that's a little bit too many villagers. Ten villagers building forward outposts is a little bit too much. Uh, probably like four or five at this point is good enough. Uh, John Dark able to finally hit her night Six stage. Ram is about to just go to town on this uh, Byzantine yeah. PC. This is going to be 14 Byzantine villager deaths pretty soon. If we like, take a look at the kill count, Stay Frosty at 125 kills. Far and away the most kills in this game. Uh, oh, yeah. That being said, the Byzantine player was able to retreat with oh, half of Oh, the villagers are out. Run! 
Yeah, it gets a decent amount out, but I mean, now the ground winery are gonna go down as well. Yep. One thing I will call out here is that it seems like Risky's been prioritizing so many offensive plays that he's actually lost a lot of his mounted samurai, and that is Mambo surrendering. It looks like, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be going to game three. Wow. In the grand gorge off. Wow. You love to see it. Love to see it. Very competitive match. Uh, I, I was a little bit surprised that like Name TBD's army was able to take such an effective uh, trade against the enemy team and just like th those Rams, just nothing could stop them. I'm not sure what yeah. happened exactly. Actually, like it looked like they weren't winning, and all of a sudden they were. I think one thing that uh, TBD did really well. Um, Corbinus obviously contributed to that early push, and then Frosty was able to keep a lot of his longbow mass alive, even when they did get pushed back, so they were able to go again uh, pretty quickly. Oh, And um, damn. the combination of that plus the mounted samurai cutting off reinforcements, I guess I just the devils were unable to fight together. I didn't spot this, but if you look at the economy count, Mambo's just lost so many vills at the end there. Ooh. I didn't even realize. Yeah, I didn't actually recognize that either. Yeah, that explains, the front. that explains the surrender. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's go ahead and pull in our team captains one more time for a quick for a quick uh, after-action report before we move into our last game. I'm going to go ahead and pull in Housed Horse as well as Stay Frosty, pulling them in now. Welcome back, guys. Hello. hello. Yes. Welcome. All right, excellent game two. I'm very happy we're going to be getting a game three. Uh I, let's start with um, let's start with Frosty. Your your team uh, definitely pulled out a win despite the previous loss. It sounded like you you in the in the previous interview you said you know you were a little bit down, but you were not out. And certainly in this game, you were by and far and away the biggest. Uh, you had the best KDA, one twenty eight kill to thirty three lost. Uh, how are you feeling right now? You know, I may be French, but I'm a man of my word. I was in the game and not out. Uh, it felt really good that we could prove after that the sheet that uh, uh, we were definitely not out, and uh, it was um, we kind of broke the curse, you know, that the us and the first team faced, where every time we pushed them, we we lost. That happened in the first game. That happened in um, our game, and I was happy that we managed to break that curse and finally end the push. And now, you know, on to the last one. Let's see how mm -hmm. it goes. Absolutely. Yes. Well said. Well said. All right, and House Horse, you guys uh, have been able to get away with a lot of uh, defensive play in the past few games where even though you lose your first uh, initial town centers, you're still able to pull back in the end. Uh, but it seems like something changed this game. How are you and your team feeling? Uh, I guess we just, like, we took too much damage, so I'm just trying not to do that next time. <laughs> That's a typical <laughs> Gorge game. I mean, this is just how Gorge works in 4v4. Yep. You're just going to have some giant push on one team and then... If you do enough damage, you win the game. So we're just going to try not to let that happen again. We made a couple of critical mistakes that we're uh, looking to correct this time. Sounds good. Absolutely. All right. Well, you guys have to. Uh, you guys have a game to prepare for, so I'll let you guys go back. Uh, oh, actually, sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and do. Can we do the last? Uh, yeah, let's do the last yeah, last sieve pick. I'm grabbing a link here. Just a minute. Just give me two minutes, real quick. Uh, too many tabs. I'll be right back. Uh, reset. Here we go. This one. All right. Where's the drop link? I'm gonna bounce down now. Thank you very much. Good luck. All right, it looks like we game are three. going into game three, the final match. Final match of the, uh, dare I say, do it big, Grand Gorjoff tournament. Honestly, oh, yeah. this has been a lot more of a success than I expected. I I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, um, I think the teams have generally played pretty well. We've got some, gotten some exciting games. Um, and, you know, I think one thing that uh, will also potentially <clears throat> come of this is that people will think more about team comps. Um, it's hard to 
build out team comps for 4v4 for a lot of the other maps because mm -hmm. you don't know which side you're going to spawn on. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, with Gorge, you're going to be fighting together. So um, I'm curious if there are you know other interactions that like we've seen with, for example, Molly feeding the HRU player that you can develop um, further kind of increase your chances of winning on gorge specifically yeah absolutely um one thing that i uh oh also one thing i'm calling out here is uh, we, got, we got some more donations to the prize pool it looks like we are now at 290 percent of my original 100 dollar goal thank you so much everybody uh who's, who donated it looks like originally you know i thought 100 dollars uh, it means that you know people are spending their time, they're playing these games, they're entertaining us. Uh, Twenty-five bucks per player on a team of four means that they can go home to a nice dinner at least. Uh, looks like we're actually nearing almost three hundred dollars. Uh, so I don't know what three hundred divided by four is that quickly, but seventy-five. Seventy-five. Yeah, it looks like people will be able to. I don't know. Buy a buy a game? new game. Yeah, they can yeah. they can go buy a different game to play after they after they win uh, the Age of Empires uh, Gorge tournament here. Um, yeah. But hopefully they stick with Age of Empires as well. You know, one one game I'm looking forward to is uh, Age of Mythology Retold. Uh, I don't know if you saw the. Did we talk about this already? Did you see the uh, the new preview images? I haven't seen the images yet. No. Did you ever play Age of Mythology Retold? No. No. Oh really? Yeah. Wait. I, so uh, what did you play? It'll, it'll be new for. Well, I only played AoE 2, mm. uh, as far as RTS goes. Oh, I, war I, I moved on to Warcraft 3. That was the that was the big transition for me. Did you, as play, far as um, RTS. did you play Dota way back? Like the original Dota? Yeah, 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 exactly. You played original Dota? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. Well, that and explains then, why And then you... my friend was like, there's this little game called League of Legends. I had friends in high school that were like, you, s you heard this game called League of Legends, and I was like, and I get to college, and everybody and their mom is playing it in the dorm with Sky. Well, can't not do it. So, I don't know if you remember this, but way back, um, at least my freshman year in college, I refused to play yeah. League of Legends. I was like, I'm not gonna play that that shit ass game. Wait, um, there's no way. Yeah, no, I, I never played it. Um, up until no. up until second semester. Okay. I, I was a I was a Company of Heroes nerd. I, I played uh, nothing but Company of Heroes, and I was trying to convince everyone around me to play Company of Heroes with me. And it was with Jason. I specifically was like, I'm gonna, c I need you to play one game of Company of Heroes with me. And if you do that for me, I will play one game of, of League of Legends with you, because he was trying to convince yeah. me to play League of Legends. And I got him right. to play a game of Company of Heroes, and obviously Company of Heroes is a, a lot of effort to get him to get to learn the game. So yeah, uh, he didn't really like it. And I played League of Legends with him, and I ended up liking it. I think what I liked about it initially was just like. People look so silly. Like I remember Nunu running around. It looks so dorky, oh, yeah. just like bouncing around like that. And mm -hmm. I was like, "All right, you know what? Let's let's play again. Let's play again." And then, and then that became, that became, you know, the rest is history. Well, as they say. As they say. Indeed. MG says, "Glad you got the dono. Didn't get a receipt. Thank you so much for don for donating. You guys are hey, awesome." Up. Let's go ahead and see if the game is ready to be entered. Looks like they're still in the lobby, so we'll still wait a little bit longer for them. Sean Sullivan says, I think it's a bait thinking that mono comps are viable. They just don't work. Well, they worked in that game. I think, though, we generally speaking, we've seen in every single game uh, that uh, these teams have mono comp. Um, not a lot of individual diversity. Uh, it's more about, you know, pieces of cogs in a machine. So maybe this is the way. Uh, kind of looks like a trend of first offensive team is the one that loses. Yeah, they did buck that trend. Uh, finally. But yeah. Yep. I think one thing that's been nice is uh, we've seen a bit of push and pull uh, in every single game it's not just oh, okay the push just continues and continues and continues so um kind of seeing how people adapt to getting the first push off yeah i i uh oh man what was i gonna say oh uh, regarding mono comps you can imagine how like if you were to just solely mono comp it's probably better for you, right? Because you can optimize your economy more. You only have to gather like two resources. Uh, you can only have to gather like one kind of uh, upgrade. 
let's say you're making mm -hmm. range units, you only need range upgrade, uh, mm -hmm. uh, blacksmith upgrades. You don't need mm -hmm. like um, like the melee ones. <clears throat> but the uh, the disadvantage there is that you need to be really in sync with your teammates. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you have the archer mask, you need your infantry ball to protect you in the cavalry charge. And that's something mm -hmm. that we saw um, Risky and uh, Corvinus play off really well on that first game in this best of three where risky had the uh, infantry, ball, infantry ball protecting yeah. the um the uh corvinus's mangonels um and that made all the difference so i think monocomps are more efficient but you need to be paying attention and working in close synergy with your teammates and that can be hard mm -hmm. to do especially if your teammates are getting raided on the side and they can't focus on the micro in the front um something that we'll have to watch out for yeah, and I think that's one thing about these players generally being of a higher caliber is that they can uh, pull that off and do that coordination a little bit better. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, I think in a lot of our games, we're, we're expecting the spear mass to be there and they're a little bit further back than you would like. Um, and by the time that, you know, they do start moving, it's a, it's a little bit over. So, uh, yeah, it's just something... I think that's like one thing that I, uh, I was thinking about as far as like why don't we see as many spears as perhaps we think we should see um, is that spears are probably uh, the most uh, they need a lot of micro because you don't want to just eight click them forward or else they'll just get shredded um, so you need to make sure that you are walking them up at exactly the right time um, and so it might just be easier to have, say, men at arms or even knights be the front line because if they do go in, then they are gonna at least to be bullet shields and nothing else. Yeah, I'm getting some messages uh, that I've been chewing on the on the mic. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. I, I'm I'm not sure what eating sounds like uh, behind this mic. I've never heard it before myself, so I'm not really uh, uh, too cognizant of it. Um, Sorry, sorry, guys. I'm sure that when I watch this uh, this playback back, I'll be uh, I'll be cringing every single time I start chewing. Uh, we are now a minute and twenty seconds away from the observer delay ending. Uh, we do have uh, all the teams readied up with their sieves picked. Uh, Zardus on the English, which we've already seen before, the classic. Housed horse on Mongols, the classic. Jigglypuff on Jean Dark, uh, the oh. classic. And then Mambo. On, on MG MG with the five. Donated memberships. They're called memberships on YouTube, I guess. What? Wait, that's so cool. What the heck? I don't. Yeah, I, I, need, I need to come up with some kind of benefits to uh, to my members. So far, all they get is do, a do welcome. Do you have message. a? Do you have like the sub noises? Is that a thing for yeah. uh, YouTube streams? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, oh, so it only registered for An Nguyen just now. Oh nope, it, it's got it's got it for Wawa as well. Um, looks like we are getting those those messages. Yeah, I see the pop up now. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, MG man. That that that's 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 killer right there. That's amazing. Oh, we even you even it, it happened for the Mongolian guy. I forgot his name, but I don't know how to pronounce that name. But um, uh, he's always been in the in, in the chat for a long time now. Uh, all right. So, Devil's Mom Mambos is actually playing the Japanese this time. So previously he's been playing the Byzantines and the Abbasids, two relatively slow booming sieves. The Japanese are a little bit in between though. I'm really curious to see how that will play out. On the right hand side we have Risky on the Japanese. Japanese, which we already know, he's very proficient with the Japanese. We have Devils Arakan playing the Rus once again, his go-to sieve. Uh, and then let's see what else we have here. In the very front, we have Frosty playing the English once again, his classic English uh, in the front position. It seems like Frosty's been in the front position almost every single game that he's been in, which is a little bit lucky for yeah. for his team actually. Um, and House Taurus can't help but not be in the near front. Oh yeah, is he also in the front again? Yeah, he, the he's, he's second from the front. This is something that's really interesting, I think, uh, with um, Mongol specifically, is you can create these artificial gaps between your TCs that you wouldn't normally you wouldn't have. So mm. it looks like there's this huge gap between Zardus's base and uh, the rest of his team, mm. um, because obviously he's going to uh, House Force is going to move his TC further back to put yeah. in between the gold vein and the wood line. Two forward English uh, players. In mm -hmm. this game, excuse me, yes. guys. Um, and then uh, looks like uh, two back Jean Dark players, Corvinus, uh, Corvinus one, also playing as Jean Dark in this game, uh, sitting all the way in the back here. Um, very interesting. We saw this in the first game where uh, having your back having your back player be a Jean Dark is actually not too advantageous because it does take longer for the knights to come out. Um, I believe you can publish videos for members earlier. Oh, okay, yeah, that might be something I can do. That's awesome. 
members exclusive only fans coming yeah yeah i'll i'll uh <laughs> i'll do some i'll do some really raunchy unit review <laughs> videos <laughs> there you go um yeah the sexiest spearman but you know now now we now we zoom in uh <laughs> All right, we have uh, Risky in the in the middle-ish position along with Arakan. I think we've seen this exact range arrangement before at this point. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm curious. If we were to implement like a ban system, I feel like English would have to be one of the civs that gets banned, right? Mm -hmm. Like English, Mongols. How, how would the ban system work? Like, do you think there should be three bans? Well, I think it'd be hard to have uh, multiple bands because uh, you run the risk of having a player play a sieve that they are completely uncomfortable with at the end of the day you know these aren't pro players so they're not going to have like the, a huge roster of sieves necessarily uh, it might me it might be literally just like one band per team just um, one band i w i would say so um yeah just to again like not completely take a player out of the game because i know I feel like competitively, I would much rather just target ban somebody completely out. Mm. Um, if I can, if I can, uh, that'd be a pretty efficient use of bans. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and especially since uh, people Sultan's Ascent is a pretty new um, expansion, and Age of Empires Four is also pretty new in general. The uh, the player base is also relatively new, so like mm -hmm. people haven't really developed the meta too much yet. Uh, People have, don't have proficiency with every single uh, Civ in the game, unlike with League of Legends, where like pretty much every top tier player can play at least every champion moderately well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think one ban definitely makes the most sense. I, I'm guessing those bans would be Mongols and English, if I had to think about it. Yeah, I think English is definitely the universal ban. Mongols, you know, you'd have to look across and see if there are Mongol players on the opposite team. Yep. Um, you know, but like what what, what, what we've definitely seen is that it's it's not as simple as okay, the curl ties out, the game is over. So um, there definitely still needs to be caution exercise. That is the one downside of the curl tie is if it does go down, it's usually a lot of effort to try to recover it. Yeah, I do feel like um, in the previous game, the Mongol player uh, House Horse there took his sweet time getting to the castle age uh it, i think if his curl tie was a little bit early uh up a little bit earlier they wouldn't have lost some of the early engages uh so i'm hoping that um maybe they can recognize the power of the curl tie this time around and make sure that it gets up right in time yeah that was one thing engages. that was one of my big takeaways from game one because uh for a long time it looked like they were um massing up and uh the one thing that was missing from their push really was the curl tie and um, house horse uh, aged up? I think a little bit later than perhaps. Uh, if you remember, the absent player was sitting on a ton of units, um, so that's something that we have to watch out for here. Is maybe a more coordinated age up uh, coming out from house horse. Obviously, um, he is not on the front line this time, so uh, should have just that little bit less pressure applied on him, and maybe can therefore hit his time is a little bit easier. Yeah, we have six villagers aging up with the Kremlin for a rock in here, able to get a really nice secure position in between these two wood lines, basically protecting, guaranteeing the protection of, of this entire side. Uh, instead of protecting mm -hmm. the front though, his, his uh, Kremlin could have been also used in the front to secure a lot of uh, forward vision. Unfortunately, we're, we're trading that forward vision for more defensive wood lines on the right hand side, uh, which is, you know, it's very sensible considering that the left hand side is relatively open. He doesn't really mind getting raided right from that direction because his town center can protect him uh, over there. Um, yeah. There's also a hunt over here that he could take advantage of so uh potentially very useful risky building an archery range in the feudal age uh the first thing that he builds i'm i'm really curious why is he going into yumi ashigaru this game it'd be interesting uh what we also see by the way uh Steel there are a up. decent amount of uh longbows coming out here from Zardus. uh gonna be pretty much matched by uh frosty however there is also a tower here yeah so both both sides will have the uh the attack speed buff and, yeah. Uh, so I'm curious because, you know, uh, one thing that we talked about before uh, things kicked off last game was how slow the tempo was, generally speaking. You know, mm -hmm. we a lot, didn't see a lot of pre 10 minute action, and then that was obviously completely flipped on its head last game. So uh, we'll see now if they decide to go back towards that bit of a slower uh, meta, or if once again we do decide to see some feudal action 
coming out from both sides. Aaron Omar says, no Ayubids, no Abbasids, and no Delhi. Yes, this is an anti-Muslim game, apparently. Um, that being said, we did see Abbasids used quite a few times in a few of the past games, uh, to yeah. pretty good effect. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. now that I think about it, it is interesting that uh, Abbasids got picked over the Ayubids. We haven't seen any Ayubids uh, picked. I'm guessing that they're not as impactful in a team game context, or these players just aren't, don't necessarily like playing the Ayubids. Uh, regarding the oh, Delhi... Oh, here we go. Uh, one sheep farmer gonna go down here. Uh, so first blood, especially econ wise, can go over to Zardis. Yeah, trading it for one longbow and two Mongol archers. Not sure it's the s most worth it thing. At least there's a good retaliation coming in from uh, Frosty. Yep, gotta be careful though. Okay, uh, Arachne just gonna donate a scout to kind of see what's going on over there. Yep. One thing oh, yeah, we'll call and, out. Yep, yeah. Oh really? Yep. That's... Yeah, we got Yumi's coming up from Risky. An interesting direction to go in. I didn't expect that. I think one thing that we're uh, seeing that uh, across all these games is that these teams tend to just favor a giant mass of range units with just a sprinkling of, you know, your sorting, uh, you know, like spearmen um, or other frontline units. It seems to be more about just massing range units on mass and then target firing anything that uh, can stand up to more than like five, six arrows at a time. I never said anti-Muslim lol. I meant at least one Muslim sub. Yeah, uh, sorry, it was just a shitty joke. Well, it's like no, 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 no autos either. Yeah, yeah. There's no autos. We don't have the millions this time around. It's all Europeans. There plus has been the... a decent amount of Mali though. Yeah, yeah it's like the one representation. Yeah, for people like Malians for some reason. They are very powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when they get get their cow boom off. That being said, none of these games have really. Uh, like, none of the Civ picks have particularly stood out, except for the English so far, I think. I mean, the, obviously the, the French raids and the Mongol raids and the Rus raids are like, you know, they're, they're good, but they're rather par for the course. It seems like in each game, if there's a winning team, it's because the English player is able to get their longbow mass and just DPS the hell out of the game. Yeah. Speaking of Archer mass, though, uh, we see a bit of a pivot from previous games now. Devil, er, House Horse, excuse me. Um, also making Archers this game. So we have two yeah. players contributing archers on both sides, um, <laughs> as opposed to like the usual Keshik. It's kind of funny, there, there's there's longbows paired with some kind of Asian archer. <laughs> so the Mongol Asian archer or the Japanese Asian archers, we'll, we'll have to see which Asian archer is best. I would like to see from Frosty maybe another four tower or something like that. It looks like in his current position, there's just not enough vision of what's happening on the enemy team's side. He's just completely blind to it. Uh, he is getting another house up though, but this should be, I, I really feel like this should be a forward outpost next to his berries at least. Um, just to give some vision to see what the enemy comp is. In comparison, yeah. Zardus is able to see what where the enemy army is, and they're able to maneuver around uh, in position for some potentially more yeah, this favorable... Game, this game is really fights. mirrored actually. You can see a potential meeting of John masses here. Corman is moving down this uh, top side as is, well actually I was going to say that, but Jiggly actually going to try to potentially go down to the bottom side here. Yep. So, gotta keep an eye on these two opposing night masses and if they can get in. Yeah, Corvinus playing Jean is gonna be quite interesting. In the previous few games, he played Malians, he played um, uh, Drushi. Uh, a few civs that are relatively known for their booming playstyles. Okay, alright, hold on. We, we see a meeting of uh, Archer masses potentially. Yeah, this tower doing a lot of work here on the side of Zardis, gonna be able to see everything yep. essentially. Finally, that, uh, TBD has. Frosty finally able to get his tower up. We'll soon mm -hmm. see uh, what they're up against. Currently, his archers Ooh. are not. Oh, okay. It does look like they're able to get some ground here. That ram's coming up. Going to be able to take out the outpost pretty soon here. Actually, there's so yeah. many archers here that they might just do the job themselves without any ram help. This outpost being lost here is going to be uh, putting the Devils team at a disadvantage here. Knights charging up, able to take out this ram so quickly. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, that nerf, those nerfs. Okay, but I think I think they're just gonna go in. Both wow! Hit, both, it's just both, a both knight on knight charge. Soak some XP. Oh, but oh my goodness, Corbin is gonna lose John almost immediately. Whereas uh, Jiggly able to keep his John. Far yeah, back, they need to and target that John. So much XP donated now here for John. Oh no! Or, and, uh, well, Jiggly's John. Yeah, and and Mambo able to get those Japanese mounted samurai out, whereas Risky doesn't even have a um, uh, a, a bannerman for his Yumi archers. Mm -hmm. wow. It's gonna be. Putting... He didn't have one, I think. This died. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like it, it died already, is what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what I mean to say. Um, 
Wow. Yeah, definitely that trade. Even though even though Devils lost the tower, they were able to take their tempo back, uh, winning a huge trade off. Uh, if we take a look yeah. at the military count here, that's 17 killed by Zardis already. Somehow this guy just keeps on and getting away with it. Jiggly, Jiggly is uh, about 90% of the way to uh, H3 or level 3 John now. Whereas yeah. I think if we look at Corvinus, Corvinus is only about halfway. Arakan getting huge rays off in the back, hitting oh, both the orange and the pink player John at the same up. time. Okay, okay. Yeah, so purple John able to run back this time. Uh, but in general though, Wow. Yeah, these mounted samurai. They're take soaking up so, so many damage. hits. That's crazy. Yeah. This is not taking damage, period. That's that's mm -hmm. that's insane. There's actually so many Mongol ar ar archers in the front now. Uh finally, yeah. uh the Arakan's knights in the back are able to get pushed off of Pink. If we take a look at Pink's villager count, I do believe he lost quite a few. He's at 35 villager 35, count right now. Yeah, a lot, a lot lost. Yeah, he, he did lose a good number of vills here. If we compare him to, say, Arakan, what is Arakan sitting at right now? Arakan is at 40. So, five villager deficit for the Mongol player here. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to get it back. We, we haven't seen either player start to go for trade. We do see Mamba's going for a side town center. So, you know, we've seen in every single game that he goes for a second town center. He seems to be the player that does it, uh, does a little bit more econ greed, even as Japanese is going for that second town center. Uh, after having fast castled, uh, Arakan getting some good knight presence, stopping the uh, uh, relics uh, from being taken on the right hand side. Uh, meanwhile, Housed Horse building a ram in full view of the enemy uh, outpost, meaning that yeah, here uh, we go. meaning that team named DB TBD is a potentially able to respond to this. Uh, they certainly will see it. I don't know if any of the players on this side are starting to age up. Oh, okay, it does look like Corvinus is looking for his castle age timing here, uh, meaning that we might be able to get some siege weapons out soon. Keep in mind, John Dark is able to uh, cast her... What's it called? Oh, oh my, Summon what? her companions? Her su no, no, no. No, <laughs> no the, the, um, the buff. Consecrate. She's able to consecrate oh. her... Um, her, her her siege workshop. Oh, there, there 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 was a uh, there was a clash of knights here on the south as well. Uh, Rockin gonna take the advantage over a lot of the knights from Jiggly. Yeah. Um, just to the east of the Mongol base. Yeah. So it looks like there's gonna be two knight civs for each team, and then two archer civs for each team. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly risky didn't do mounted samurai again. Worked so well last time. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised too. I, I don't know if the Yumi Ashigaru is necessarily the play here, but. Um, it seems to be the decision that he's going for, and he's a better player than me, so uh, I'm going to trust I him. I think it's just looking at the distribution, um, you know, you have the choice between the Rus going for archers or the Japanese going for archers. I think three people going into cab maybe is what's is t too much. Yeah. Is their thought process. I feel like there so, are benefits to going for Rus archers simply because Rus get so many uh, advantages with chopping wood. Um, so they can usually yeah. get out the archers a lot faster. Uh, we have four rams pushing up along with, hey, we do have mixed composition. Looks like a single spearman will be joining this arch, this Mongolian archer. Hey. That spearman is going down instantly so as many soon rams, as I call though. them out. This council hall probably going to get destroyed. Yeah, bigger. this is looking bad. Uh, the mounted samurai charging into the archer line here. Absolutely oh. no spearman here to protect it. Honestly, uh, Frosty could consider putting up palings here. His villager line is going to be exposed though. The mounted oh, samurai is going to hit the villager line. That's oh, potentially oh, a huge man. hit. His town center, okay. there's just no space yeah. here. Yep. He's giving up a, so much space in this in this attack here. Uh, the the Rams moving on from need, the we council hall. Cab. We need some cab. Onto the from, town center. Uh, TBD. Yeah. Why are only archers here? Where where is uh, a rock and is able to put up a raid on the back at the same exact time? Where is uh, Corvinus? Is the big question on my head. Wait, oh, he's where? coming up now. Where is Corvinus? Oh, okay. Up. Now now he's here. Now he's here. He was getting into the castle yeah. age. He comes in here. John Dark says rally rally to me. Heals up all the troops here. Um, the ra the town center is unfortunately going to be going down pretty shortly. Uh, a Wulu in the background. Uh, oh, not able to secure able to find anything. A lot of red bills here. A lot of red hunters. Yep. With meat in their hands. Yep. Arakan isn't in this battle, but he is able to raid at the same time, dealing a lot of economic a lot of economic damage. A uh, lot of French knights going down at the same time in the front here. Corvinus is Jean Dark able to age up, soaking up so many archer shots. Uh, that being said, Devils is very happy that they were able to kill both the town ca ta council hall and the town center for uh, for Frosty. Oh, so Corvinus slowing him down. John again, and that's a uh, age three John. So that's going to be another 500 gold to bring her back. Oh, no. Meanwhile, Jiggly's John is killing. 
Yeah, it, it does look like the Rams are slowly starting to go down though. Uh, and keep in mind, uh, Risky has been able to make it into the Castle Age, meaning his Yumi Ashigaru are now veteran up against the uh, base H2 uh, archers for the enemy team. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is an advantage in that sense. The Yumi are able to push up. They're moving so fast, chasing up against the Longbows. The Longbows are not going to be able to kite this out. Yeah, one big thing to consider here is the House Force is not anywhere close to Castle Age and therefore uh, very far away from that Cruel Tie. So uh, that is one thing that uh, TBD do have going for them, I think. Um, and then, as you alluded to, I personally don't get the hate for Yumi. Um, for one, you know, if they have one Bannerman, then they're on par damage-wise with every, every other base archer in the game. And the other thing that they uh, do benefit from, they have... Uh, that extra movement speed to kite a little bit easier. And I think they have half a tile of range more than your average archer. Mm. So a little they're bit of always going to get the first shot off. A little bit of teamwork that I love to see here is uh, Arakan trying to help uh, Frosty rebuild his town center with a couple of bills, but unfortunately one of them will go down in the process and we will not be able to secure that position again. It looks like, uh, it looks like uh, Frosty will have to mine for more town center resources on the side here. The question is, can he get back in time? He's already been out for a long time now. His score is definitely the lowest of the entire uh, game. That being said, Jigglypuff is getting uh, ra getting raids out the wazoo here. Yeah, Arakan is putting in work. Constant pressure in that backline. Just okay. non-stop archer battles. Yeah, uh, we're pushing up here. Again, the Yumi um, out tech the archers, but obviously there are veteran longbows on the other side. Yeah. The one thing that is going to suck, obviously, for TBD is that they do not have the veteran longbows. Um, and they probably won't for a while. Well, yeah, a little, a little while at the very least. He opted for um, a Wululu instead of a Wululu. <laughs> I <I've> never. <laughs> what the heck is that? Um, it looks like Zardus is. Uh, if you take a look at the military count here, uh, Zardus has the most killed in the game uh, by a pretty significant margin. That being said, Risky uh, and Frosty both keeping up uh, with pretty high DPS on their ends as well. Uh, the biggest loser as far as deaths go is the mongol player house horse uh losing a ton of archers in the process throughout all this fighting uh doesn't look like he's still is he macroing for age up he, he's still not really macroing for an age up here it looks like they're staying in this age uh oh my god Arakan's harassment is just non-stop in this back here what's jimmy i, 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 I think I, I think house horse is uh trying to age up here uh no no wood incoming i um, see so, i see yep uh we'll yeah. see if uh they can kind of pounce on that little bit of yeah, Jiggly, Jigglypuff finally trying to look for an age up here. Uh, his villager count is down to 47. We can, if we compare him to Corvinus, Corvinus is currently at 60. So definitely the advantageous French player, uh, or Jean-Drac player in this case. A ton of gold miners in the back here. Oh no, so many gold miners for Risky getting raided out by Mambos' uh, mounted samurai. At the same time, Corvinus is trying to raid Mambos' uh, these, are, these, these are solid. This is solid. Oh, whoa. He decides to let the orange villagers live they're really bullying uh house horse here it kind of feels like yeah yeah i mean he's he, he's definitely been the player that gets uh gets smacked the most even in the previous game he he was the guy that had to run around for quite a long time a lot of corvinus's knights are going to be going down unfortunately yeah john is able to make it out i think if he keeps running though yep he hasn't and cast there are the, there's uh, a there, there is a pocket of knights that uh, are now going on to mambus yeah. as well Oh, so many priests are going to go down here as well. Oh my god, Arakan hitting more and more raids. Uh, meanwhile, Jigglypuff ret retaliates with his own raid against uh, against Corvinus. So many of his berry villagers going down. These farmers are potentially going to go down too. Risky also needs to worry about his wood line. This seems to be a game just about raids once again. It's almost... Oh, my oh it looks like this might happen. Corvinus, Corvinus what are you so doing? Right no! <laughs> Oh no, that's six knights converted. That's huge. At the same time, he's losing his base. He's actually falling apart right now. Oh no, Corvinus oh. getting hit in so many different directions at the same time. Trying to pull knights back to try to defend his base, but John Dark is just this in is here. This is absolutely devastating. A lot of villagers in the back here getting a hit. The farmers are not responding, not running away like they should. Looks like uh, Mambos is also going to be potentially looking to join this party. Uh, Corvinus is finally able to pull his knights back. Trying to oh, but hold on. We're going to get some action in the front here. I don't think House is going to be able to get this Cruel Tie up in time. Yep. And it looks like oh, Mounted Samurai oh, might... Nope. Oh, nope. No, well, nope. they're going to get kicked apart by all these arrows. Yep. Um, that is the trade-off. Running away. So, after all that raid, Corvus is down... 
Corviness is now down to 51 vils. Uh, if you compare that to the enemy friend, uh, oh Jean Arc player, still down at 43. There are so many arrows in the air right now. These arrows are blotting out the sun. There's so many coming in from both teams. Everyone's just focused on range. It seems like range GPS is the name of the game in this one. Uh, we do see Risky going for Buddhist monks, of all things. Uh, very interesting strategy. I, I have seen oh. him talk about this before. Yeah, I mean, it makes, kind of makes sense, right? Oh, uh, that explains... So win limited windows When he wooloo'd, he was buffing up his archers. That's why he's going for the Yumis. Uh, you know, I've actually heard him talk about this. Uh, when you when you buff up all those Yumis, the Wulu provides uh, since it, since it's, it's a buff, Buddhist right? monk, yeah, it provides a damage buff, a damage buff for all of his uh, archers as oh well. Oh my but god! Looks like, like that Buddhist monk will be though. going down. Oh no! Now he's just donating a a, 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 a relic away. Meanwhile, um, Frosty's longbowmen are still stuck in the feudal age, not uh, really Ram, able to compete. Ram, here. Ram's Ram's going down here from Frosty. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that Frosty is the one that's building these Rams here. Um, being yeah. behind us economically as he is. He's uh, only on off still, though. two town centers right now at 52 vills. This is a very low villager count game, it looks like. I think Frost needs to think about getting a third town center up or something like that. He's focusing on walling in a really weird way. I'm not sure if that's the right direction to go in. Yeah. Um, one thing that Mombos is kind of doing here that's not ideal. Uh, just going in with, you know, six, seven mounted samurai at a time, but. Uh, it does mean that a lot of them are going to get focus fired down, and yep, that night mess is once again gone. Yeah, I, 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 I really feel like Frosty needs to hit the castle age. I don't, I don't know if he realizes that he's the only player that's not in the castle age, and he's been not in the castle age for a very long time uh, compared to everyone else. They are fighting around the curl tie right now. Uh, it doesn't look yeah, like curl I don't tie think is there. Yeah, okay, Corvidus's this... knights are getting kited out in these really tight corners. This urban this warfare over here. This might be what you need if you are devils to kind of turn the tide here. The, the, the curl tie. Is buffing 70 Mongol archers and some amount of other stuff. So yeah, Holy we're going to be forced crap. to retreat here. The I, Rams I, are not enough. I will point out like, that the entire time that this has been happening, Arakan has refused to participate in the central team fight. Instead, always opting to raid. He has knights in every single player's base. Just knights here, knights there. If you look oh at oh my god, look, look at the far back. There's so many. Yeah, Zardus is just getting lives. his villagers wiped oh. over here. Oh my goodness. We look at this village count down to 59 right now. Holy crap! That is just devastating. Risky doing the Buddhist monk buff. All of his, all of his Yumi Ashigaru up to 11 plus six damage here. Each one of them doing so much more damage compared to the uh, Mongol archers. Actually, it's only one more damage, but you know, it's it's still, it's, you know, it's Yumi Ashigaru. You know, we're impressed by that. Oh, it's because it's because there's a cruel type buff. Oh wait, yeah. does the buff affect the longbows? Wait, what? Is no. that what's happening right now? I don't think so. Do we just find like a new tech? That'd be so cool. Oh, if that's actually, wait, no, it is, actually it is. Yeah, yeah, because there's six plus two. There's no way for them to get plus two uh, without going to castle. So, oh, you might be onto something. Is that what? Oh my goodness. Okay, still not able to. <laughs> to it's not able to two shot that Jean Dark though, unfortunately. Um, but that's really cool. Uh, this entire. Oh my god, dude. I I feel like a rocket has been doing so much work in the back, like. Yep. Keeping the enemy and, team. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We see, we see. Oh my goodness, this keep is gonna completely interrupt. There's so many red villagers gonna come down. Oh my where, goodness. Where, where are you seeing this? Where are you seeing this? I don't even see this. There's a, there's a keep uh, to the to the oh, uh, west. Oh, Corvinus hits it. He's That's the fattest devastating. holy wrath I've ever seen. There's He's down to 35 vills at this point. Eight or nine plus fives that pop up at the same time. Oh, there's this is a bloodbath. There's destruction on both sides. But but we see the we Arakan's see Zardus still in go here. The wing guard's gonna come through. This this the key has not been cancelled by the way. Oh my god, this is Wingard's goes down. here! That's, that's... Oh, okay, oh, keep these cancelled. No. Okay, the Wingard seems to be the win condition for uh Team Devils. We've seen it before. Uh I don't know why are people just refusing to make spears? I feel like just a handful of spears in the back of the base just kinda of shuts down these attacks. Arakan only ever raids with like a handful of knights at a time, so like like five spears patrolling this area just shuts down everything down. I'm I'm not sure why they're they're just accepting these uh these losses over and over again. Also, a partial wall right here, back here, would would help so much. An another raid, Zardus is just trying to struggle. He's actually using his villagers to snipe out the ra the knights himself. Oh my god! If we Italy is on 35 econ and 19 military, it is not a fun time for him right now. Yeah. Uh, if we take a look at the military kill count here, Risky's at 172 kills, but he's also lost 201. So he's lost the most, but he's also killed the most. At the same time, Moroccan 145 killed. Many of them are villager. I, I would actually argue most of them are villager kills. So, um, 
honestly putting putting na team named TBD on the map here. Uh, he, yeah. He's the main player that I think has been holding things down because Stay Frosty has. has look, 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 look at look at these mugs just in the back with these relics, just ready to go, ready to battery up this yeah. giant archer mask coming in from TBD. Stay Frosty finally able to hit the Castle Age with oh, his this, white this, tower. This Pearl Titan needs to pack up and go. Yeah, there's. Maybe. I'm Maybe? not sure where they're focused right now. Oh, okay, there we go. I'm All really right. liking this monk strategy by Risky. Yep, Zard is going to lose out on his main TC here. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's uh, he's made remade society uh, further back. Yeah, he is he in the back there anymore. He is the only player in the Imperial Age. Keep in mind. Uh, that being mm -hmm. said, all of the Devils players are now at 3K score, whereas most of team. Oh, okay. God, it's not even oh, close. The buff is happening it's so again. not even close. You means. That's 11 damage for the longbows. That's actually a huge buff. It just wins every single fight. It's like curl tie, but even better. I mean, well, is it better? Mobile. Yeah, it's like yeah, a well, mobile curl tie. You, 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 it's like curl tie again. You know, yeah. they they also heal. Like, this is kind of yeah. crazy, actually. Wait, yeah. risky strategy here is like so ingenious. I'm telling like, you, you me, you me are slept on. I mean, I didn't I didn't necessarily see the Buddhist bu uh, tech, but like, yeah, oh, you are so nice. No. So many Again, Mongo villagers going down there. Oh, never mind. These are allied knights. They are faster than your average archer, so in a kite fight, uh, you cannot kite out Yumi's as effectively as you could. Dude, this is so. Oh, that's a that's a surrender. Wow, that's we a surrender. Oh that. my we god. Don't, we don't get to see the long. Uh, Holy the, crap! The and the upset. Whoa, dude. These uh these Buddhist monks. Wow. Risky really did it! That's one, thing, that's one thing we came to see is the tech, and uh, in, in the final game it comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, name the best for last. Team name TBD. Oh, actually, uh, Mambo's is still is he still salty? Uh, trying to raid a little bit. But ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have a winner for the first Grand Gorge off on the Do a Big server. Wow, I, I didn't expect it. This is the dark horse of the tournament. This this is a team that hasn't played together before. Uh, they have Frosty, who is one of the relatively lower ranked uh, players in this tournament, and yet they were able to pull through with some really ingenious tactics uh, and, and 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 strategies that I haven't seen before. We we saw the we saw the Malian combo with the HRE uh, uh, Akintropo. We saw the we saw the uh, Corvinus's uh, Manganels and then the HRE Ball. Uh, Risky just showing himself up at, to be a really impressive player here, trying to do all kinds of strategies. In the second game, he had he came out with the Mounted Samurai, dealing devastating damage. And then in this game, the, the mass of Yumi Ashigaru with those Buddhist monks just completely changed the course of the game. Like, nobody could do anything against that. Um, and at the same time, I, I want to give a shout-out to Arakan, who, like, constantly kept up the uh, raiding in the back. You'll, you'll take a look here and see... All of these, oh my god, look at this, look at this line here. Uh, Jigglypuff, Zardas, uh, Housed Horse, uh, which other players are they? Mambos, all of them losing so many villagers. This is all due to Arakan's constant raids. Roost Knights in every single base. I don't know how he managed to control that many Roost Knights to raid that effectively. Every single time I pan, pan back there, there would be like 30 villagers getting, um, getting uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, disrupted by those Roost Knights. Um, and then if we take a look at the military count here, Risky just going crazy with that with that military count. Absolutely amazing game. Mm -hmm. Once again, best archer, best infantry, and best cav civ wins. Oh my god. Okay, uh, that was that was an amazing game to watch. Um, I'm going to have to pull in uh, the captains for one final uh, post-game interview. Uh, let's have him come in here. Oh, actually, I think, uh, I think House Tour said he can't. Oh, uh, he's okay. late for something. Got it, got it, got it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll pull in. I'll, I'll, we'll just let's just hop into name TBD. We'll, we'll we'll interview the whole team. Shit, just messaged me as well. Like, hey, dude, uh, do you want? Are you? Let's press VPN. Yeah. What's, What's up, guys? Well? What's up, guys? What's up? You guys. Hey. You guys are the winners. You guys. Uh, a stunning upset in my opinion like De team devils <laughs> was the most organized uh like clan team they've been playing together for a long time i mean i think there's a devils member here actually a and you're also on the devils clan i think oh yeah oh yeah but uh, <laughs> tell me something it's also risky yeah me and risky <laughs> both of us oh <laughs> uh, i see oh risky's also involved with the devils clan i see i see yeah, oh yeah. yeah oh yeah oh yeah 
Yeah, because I oh man, dude, I, I like they were they were strong. They were playing together. They were playing organized. They had a very consistent strategy that was doing winning them a lot of games. But somehow you guys were able to pull through with some really ingenious tactics. Um, I don't know if you guys heard earlier, but I call, I called out uh, one risky had some really interesting strategies, especially in the in the third game with those um, Buddhist monks buffing up all the archers, buffing up not only yeah. the Yashigaru but also the longbowmen. That was crazy. Um, and then, uh, what else was it? Uh, it was uh, a rockin'. You had knights in every player's base the whole time. Just yeah, waiting. like it was like six groups of it. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> that was insane to watch. Uh, yeah. Super fun. Um, and then uh, in the there was a I, was it the first game or the second game? I don't remember, but I, I saw the combination between uh, Corvinus's mangonels as well as Risky's uh, infantry ball, just like working together, as well as the cows feeding into the Aachen. A lot of really amazing teamwork there. Um, really impressed with what you guys did. I, I want to hear from all of you guys how you guys are feeling about the game, how you guys are feeling about the win, and also what you guys are going to spend the prize money on. I think each of you, each one of you guys is going to win seventy five bucks. So Ooh, that's insane. Relatively that cool. Thank you for uh, all the donations. All right, one of you guys start. Uh, can I start? So yeah, yeah. honestly, like the ideas were uh, coming from me, like which civilization we should pick. So the first game was a really good lesson for me to understand how the enemy plays, because usually I just need one game to understand uh, what what I need to do differently, what the team need to do differently, and focus. Uh, the first game was uh, we lost that because of not enough map control, and we didn't need it really a boomy save, a feeding save into another one. So I advised to my teammates that. We should go back to Japanese and I should pick Zushi because I, I want to feed the Rams because thanks to the uh, Imperial officials I can get those Rams out uh, really fast and really well. And the mm. Japanese player went with the Mounted Samurais which gained us more map control. That was our only the thing we needed. So me and the English player we were forcing uh, on the middle. Uh, me making the ramps and also I use my chicken use as a body bag mm. which means that <laughs> I didn't care if I lose my units the English player should keep his longbowmen alive the whole game mm. and uh, because of that we pushed in the middle and later on uh, the Japanese player joined into the fight he didn't have to go get to the middle uh, only later because he had to just keep raiding just uh, searching for villagers and killing them ramming the economy yep. so after that we pushed in and win the uh, second game, the first thing, as I said, the first game was a really good lesson from losing, like how the Debius clan plays. Uh, the third game, I, I told the team that uh, we need to play way differently. The uh, like we need to play side that they will not really like. Uh, oh yeah, they're gonna do that. No, no, no. So I told my uh, teammates that we need the Japanese again, but this time uh, it's a Yumi Archer spam, and I will go with Jean Dark and. Uh, it's gonna be just a micro difference, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Better micro win. So uh, I went with Jean Dark as well, uh, doing some um, check-ins, like where they are running with the knives to see what they are doing, how they are doing that. And uh, after that, like I, I did the same thing just in feudal, and after that, uh, I did the same thing just in castle. But I got up to H3 really fast and get a, ro a royal bloodline. So when they pushed in, when they destroyed the council hall and the TC of my teammate, uh, my I had a royal bloodline with like 20 knights, and it was really easy to push back the enemy with a plus two ranged armor, uh, melee armor, and royal bloodline with my knights. So after that, we just raided the enemy and uh, eventually we won by uh, special me killing 40 English religion. Oh, that's yeah, it. that was a lot of... I like to see the adaptations. That was really, really cool. Two completely different Japanese playstyles from Game 2 to Game 3. Yeah, that was a very in-depth nice. analysis. Thank you for that. Um, wow. A a any, any other thoughts? But, I mean, I think everybody played really well. I mean, Arakan did a great job of, you know, raiding and keeping them busy, like having to keep in the map control. And then Frosty did a fantastic job of defending on the front. I mean, he was kind of, you know, taking all the shots for us. I, so I think was he was the nice. he was the front player in almost every single game that you guys every played. I think. Yeah. yeah, he's going to be bloody and bruised. He's going to be sore tomorrow. That's <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, um, yeah, well, that that is that concludes the tournament. Uh, I am and going then... to... 
Oh, sorry, Frosty, go ahead. The yeah, effect I had my own comments. Yeah, of sorry, course, of course. Sorry to cut you off. Um, you know, this is my first time playing competitively of any game. I've, I, and, you know, I'm really happy that I got to play this because I've, I've only been playing this game for like not even a year, like eight months. And to be playing at this, at this level of these people is like, you know, it's just amazing. And finally being able to do good with them as well, not just being, you know, carrying, carried. I, have, I can actually hold my weight is really good because I get to kind of prove to myself that, you know, this is it. You know, I found the game. And that game, you know, all those games that try to stick to English, stick to one thing and just perfect it. And so, you know, even even after the game I lost where I took a big morale hit, I was happy but I was able to just get back up and, you know, play correctly and help my team win the tournament. So that was really what made me happy. Yeah, absolutely. I think... um. One thing that really impressed me about all the teams in this tournament is that everyone basically played their role. Everyone had like a single unit that they were uh, trying to monocomp, and then you guys had to work together in order to defend each other, which is really amazing to see. So really nice job, everybody. Um, all right, well, I think with that, uh, we will go ahead and call it there. That concludes the first ever Grand Gorge Off uh, on the Do A Big server. Um, thank you so much to everybody who uh, came in and watched and gave support, as well as uh, gave donations. Thank you to all the players, as well as everyone who also signed up. Uh, this was a ton of fun to cast, um, and I got to see some really amazing games. So uh, thanks to everybody here. Um, for the winners, uh, I will message you guys uh, and try to figure out how we can arrange the uh, wire transfer for the prize money. Um, and then, uh, yeah, aside from that, oh, also, you guys are going to be given the title of Did It Big on the right-hand side of the server. So if on the right-hand side, you'll see Amazing. at the very top, all of our tournament winners did it that did it big, they, they get that special tag, so you guys will too. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah. In, in some ways, that might be the true victory here. <laughs> uh, all right. yeah, and, uh, Chile, thank you so much for organizing. It was a great experience, great tournament, great uh, admin work. So much fun. So I hope yes. you can do it again. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. Thank you so much. That was a really good opportunity. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Well, with that said, I will.